good morning. Uh, this is my uh, pleasure to welcome you uh, here today, this uh, round table on behalf of my... Uh, good morning. Uh, this is my immense pleasure to welcome you all here today on behalf of my editor who uh, scheduled to be and wished to be here uh, but due to some uh, emergencies he could not join. So uh, thank you each and every one of you uh, for being with us today. The Business Standard happy to be uh, able to host this uh, round table uh, today here in this conference room. Uh, we would like to thank you, uh, uh, Synergy, uh, Syngenta Foundation uh, for Sustainable Agriculture for making us a part of this novel uh, initiative. Here, I would like to give you a brief, uh, you know, about my uh, newspaper uh, with a goal to promote good governance and best practice of business and economy. The business standard puts uh, extra emphasis on new business uses. However, it is also covered general issues, sports, features, and, and uh, entertainment. The platform also provides uh, uh, selective international news and analysis from Bloomberg, Reuters, fo Foreign Policy, Policy Syndicate, and Hindustan Times. On the other hand, uh, Syngenta uh, Foundation is one of the organizations that has been working uh, relentlessly with government and other NGO and INGO, uh, INGOs uh, in building a healthy and uh, strong nation by improving uh, nutrition status of the uh, people and uh, the society. So uh, under, under its nutrition city ecosystem uh, uh, project, Syngenta Foundation aiming to, aiming to improve health and nutrition and, uh, contribution and uh, contribute to reduce poverty by increasing demand and supply of local agroecologist foods. So here I uh, would like, I um, don't want to take too much time. Uh, so a very uh, warm welcome to each and everyone uh, here in this uh, 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 important uh, round table. Over to you, the moderator, Mr. Hamidul H. Khan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Muhammad Yamin, staff correspondent, the Business Standard. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you again to this round table arranged by jointly the Business Standard and Syngenta Foundation for Sustainable Agriculture. Let us uh, go for a short uh, round of introduction. So, uh, I'd like to start from myself. My name is Hamidul H. Khan. I'm the CEO of HK Consulting. And I have my colleague with me. Her name is Jovaida Rike. So from right, I would like to request to introduce yourself. Hello, good morning, everybody. My name is Helen Pradak, and I'm working at the Swiss Tropical and Public Health Institute and coordinating the Nutrition in City Ecosystems project. Thank you very much for joining us today. Hello, good morning. This is Moshpikul Alam Talukdar. I am working as a project manager of NICE project in Syngenta Foundation for Sustainable Agriculture. Thank you. I think uh, but the mic is, the sound is a bit low. Can you announce the sound of the colleagues? Is there anyone from sound department? Sound to sound in Bharat Okay. Cornelia, yeah. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Cornelia Speich, also joining from Swiss TPH in Switzerland and working in the Nutrition in City Ecosystems project. Good morning, everyone. My name is Esbi Nassim. I used to work at Bangladesh Rice Research Institute of, under Minister of Agriculture several years ago. But now I'm working in a private company, working in agriculture and seed production, seed marketing, and things dealt with uh, seed and agriculture. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. This is Krishna Shen, working with the Syngenta Foundation for Sustainable Agriculture, Bangladesh, as a finance and administration lead. Thank you. Uh, good morning. This is uh, Shahiduddin Akbar. I work for Bangladesh Institute of ICT and Development. Uh, we used to pursue Nutrition Club and uh, Nutrition Olympiad in Bangladesh. Thank you. 
Good morning. I'm Dr. Khandukar Gulam Muazzam, Research Director, Center for Policy Dialogue. It's a civil society think tank. I don't have much expertise on this issue. I came here to learn about this new and very interesting topic. Thank you. Good morning to all. I am Dr. Joshi Muddin. I am working as a professor in the Department of Horticulture, Sherry Bangla Agriculture University. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Xavier Bouan. I am working as Senior Technical Advisor for FAO on Dhaka Food System. Very good morning. This is Sharipa Parbin. I have been working for Dhaka Food System, FAO Bangladesh. Uh, as a uh, food system uh, city coordinator, I have been coordinating overall Dhaka South City Corporation like that to uh, scale up our program. Thank you all and also inviting us. Good morning. It's Masuma Choudhury. I'm working also in Dhaka Food System Project, FAO. I'm nutrition and gender specialist. Thank you. Good morning, this is Abdul Rauf. I'm working for Syngenta Foundation for Sustainable Agriculture, Bangladesh. I'm wor uh, working as a partnership and digital delivery lead. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum and good morning. This is Mahmoud Mahabur Rahman, Research Director, Food Planning and Monitoring Unit, FPMU, Ministry of Food. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Assalamu alaikum and very good morning. This is Mohammed Abdul Wadud, Executive Director, Bangladesh Institute of Research and Training on Applied Nutrition, that is Barton. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum and very good morning. This is Mohammed Abdul Kayam Sharkar, Chairman, Bangladesh Food Safety Authority. Good morning. Uh, my name is Mohammed Farhad Jamil. I am working for Sinjata Foundation for Sustainable Agriculture in Bangladesh as country director. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and dear colleagues. We are going to start with the welcome address by Mr. Farhad Jamil, country director, Sinjata Foundation for Sustainable Agriculture, Bangladesh. May I audible? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, again, good morning and welcome to everyone who is joining us today. We are very privileged to have you in the round table. Okay. We are very privileged to have you in the round table discussion on creating nutrition vital city and role of multi stakeholder platforms jointly organized by Syngenta Foundation for Sustainable Agriculture and the Business Standard. This is part of a project nutrition is in city ecosystem, in short, NICE, with the support of Swiss development and cooperation, we force Swiss-based public and private organization, actually uh, Swiss TPH, ETH, Site and Life, and Syngenta Foundation and for Sustainable Agriculture, we are implementing this project in three uh, countries, Bangladesh, uh, Kenya, and Rwanda since 2011. In each of the cities, uh, in, in each of the country, we are working uh, uh, with two cities. In Bangladesh, we are implementing the project in Rangpur and Dinajpur in partnership with City Corporation Authority. Uh, and in Bangladesh, uh, Syngenta Foundation lead the implementation. However, this project is led by Swiss TPAs globally. And, and for this project, we are, uh, City corporations are, are our key stakeholder. However, we are, we are working with different organizations, both public and private sector organization, farmers association, to ensure the safe and, and nutrition security uh, at city uh, for the city dwellers. So, Syngenta Foundation for Sustainable Agriculture is a Swiss-based uh, Swiss, uh, Swiss based international development organization uh, created by Syngenta. We are as a non-profit organization, independent non-profit organization. We are working for improving the livelihood of small and marginal farmers in Asia and Africa by imparting sustainable agriculture technology and activation of Belugian. In Bangladesh, we are working since 2011. We are implementing couple of agriculture development projects. Uh, uh, it's from technology transfer, ag digitalization, weather-based crop insurance, nutrition, and many other areas. 
but our ultimate aim how we can help smallholder farmers how we can help bangladesh government to achieve its um, uh, it is, um, achieve its some specific sdg goals so in our today's discussion we would like to uh, know more from know more from you about the role and relationship of different uh, different uh, actors in city food systems the gaps in functioning the relationship among the food system actors and the government stakeholders and also to know and also want to learn from you about the role of multi stakeholder platform in improving this relationship so that actually we can uh, ensure the nutritious food uh, and bring the nutrition awareness of the city stakeholders finally uh, thank you again for conveying to discuss uh, discuss this important topic and i look forward to today's discussion and your ideas thank you very much thank you mr farad jamil for your uh, speech elaborating nice project but uh, we are running a bit late and we have uh, our chief guest with us mr md abdul kayam shorkar chairman bangladesh food safety authority he is also the additional secretary to the government of bangladesh we have also other significant government officials and uh, colleagues from uh, development partners and other organizations and also members from academia and think tank so ladies and gentlemen i would like to invite miss helen pythek head of health system unit swiss tps to talk about the nice project which actually uh, sponsored today's program in association with in association with in association with uh, the business standard helen thank you very much i have some slides i don't know if it's possible to show them uh, you can talk about this then i can i had sent slides to you apollo you you your okay your slide can you send me i can also proceed without don't worry um, it might just be easier for the reader if there were some slides just to walk people through. So, yeah, firstly, also from my side, thank you very much for convening this roundtable and really to appreciate people taking time on the weekend to join us. Um, that's really uh, highly appreciated. All the um, government officials that are here, also very nice as well to connect with the, the colleagues from FAO. Uh, we've had some exchanges with the FAO colleagues in, in Rome about the NICE project and... Um, we've also had previously, we've been operating now for one year. In the early stages, we also had um, some exchanges locally with your, with your colleagues here as well. I think um, Fahad has already mentioned um, that we are, um, it's a global project that was initiated by the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation. And it really has this focus on secondary cities. So we're not looking at mega cities. Um, very aware that there are important initiatives on the way in the capital, in Dakar, here in, in Bangladesh, and uh, it will be really excellent to have some exchange and see some of the learnings that you have. The focus here is particularly on secondary cities um, as a more manageable, perhaps, size of population for food systems transformation. Um, so this is a bit also new territory for the Swiss Agency and Development Corporation. Usually they're working at national level, um, but really to have this focus now on the city level, of course that also depends in all the contexts a lot on the question of devolution of power, decentralization, um, but really to appreciate that here in Bangladesh we have very close um, relationship, I would say, with the city corporation it is in Rangpur and the municipality of Dinajpur. Um, so really to appreciate that, that there is really willingness to collaborate with the project. Um, so we do have a, a very active uh, forum, let's say, of, of national partners at city level. We're just back from, from, from visiting them now. I think perhaps the other piece of information that's um, maybe interesting for people to know, this is a 
the other wish of the Swiss agency was that we should form a public private partnership. So there are research institutions from Switzerland involved um, and also two foundations involved. So the Sight and Life Foundation, which may or may not be known in Bangladesh, I think they do do some work here. And of course, leveraging the presence and also the strong work ongoing on the production side of the Syngenta Foundation for Sustainable Agriculture. We have across the whole project uh, four work streams, let me say. The first one is really looking at all these questions around multi-sectoral platforms, bringing together different government line ministries, bringing in also the private sector, uh, into dialogue with the city corporations, making sure that the civil society is also involved. There is a push, and happy to hear that we have gender experts because we have also this push to make sure that the platforms at city level are inclusive, that there is involvement of women also representing other women, um, so not in a personal capacity, and also youth. So this is the other strong focus of the project as well. I think you can zip through now. I would have started a bit with the context, but I think with the people in the room, the context and the reason for the, the backdrop to the project would be clear. There is uh, many problems that we're facing at the moment uh, leading to this interest, how to transform food systems. Next slide, please. This would be our vision. Perhaps just to spend one moment on that, so there is really this first work stream around food systems governments, that's where the multi-sectoral uh, platforms come in. The other feature, let's say, of the NICE project, where it would also be good, perhaps at a later stage, to have exchange, is really to work across the demand and supply side. So to bring those two together, to look for the whole kind of network of interactions when demand and increased supply, how they can come together. And then, of course, there is a focus on farmers in the city food sheds around Rangpur and Dinajpur um, to work along the value chains, so nutritious sensitive value chains, and to encourage entrepreneurship, um, bringing the supply of uh, well-produced foods to city markets. Next slide. Keep going, sorry, I can also do it. This was really the background that of course, um, it's a multi-sectoral project in that sense, covering also different aspects of the SDGs. I think the next slide we've also already covered. These are the six cities which we're focusing on. Yeah, And I think this will also be already familiar to um, to the colleagues from FAO. So this is how this plays out in the context of the project. Work stream one, if you like, or outcome one, the whole question of food shift and governments. Then really working on the supply side, working also on the demand side, increasing also knowledge about nutritious foods, about agroecologically produced foods. I think in this context, we're talking a lot, the context of Bangladesh, we're talking a lot about food safety with that regard, so also very hopeful that we can have some discussion about that as well. And then the work stream really focused on extracting learnings and best practices from across these six cities for sharing more widely. So that would be in a nutshell how the project fits together from the activity level uh, really mapping out what was already happening in those cities. There's already a lot of activities, certainly on the nutrition side. Exploring how we can increase the awareness of food systems as a concept and bringing in different actors to deal with this question of food systems and food systems transformation. So the output level and then the four outcomes that I, I briefly alluded to. So in a nutshell, that's governance, production, demand and Extraction of learnings. Next slide. This is where I think we stand at the moment. I think the topic for today is around the urban food governance. This is where we started, exploring which structures were already in place. There are many structures for nutrition in place, so it, that's been our starting point. 
also building capacities at the city corporations and municipalities. We've invested quite some time this first year to take baselines of the situations in these six cities, also to inform areas where we may look to influence policy at city level, which would be interesting to discuss more today, um, and then reaching into the production demand and also looking at some of the post-processing uh, activities as well as we go forward. Perhaps just to let you know that on the website for the project there are city fact sheets, so there is a first information, let's say, a baseline situation of these six cities. Uh, this is something that we want to be updating each year, so that there is a kind of chronology of the developments in the six cities. Last slide would simply be just to show the organizations that are involved. And finally, to thank you with the next slide very, very much for, for your attention and for being here today. Thank you, Helen. Just a little bit of improvement with the uh, mic. The mic loves a bit proximity, so please drag it closer to you and it works fine. Yeah. So this is what my colleagues said. Uh, suggesting me from TBH. So uh, it's my turn to present the keynote. Give me a second. I was assisting actually Helen to get her presentation, it was not in this computer. So, uh, today's chief guest, the country director of Syngenta Foundation, my colleagues from uh, TPH, Swiss TPH, colleagues from FAO, colleagues from other government organizations. Our today's topic is nutrition creating nutrition vital city, role of multi-sector stakeholder platforms. The aim of this keynote is to, keynote present is to provoke your thoughts and facilitate an engaging discussion in this round table on creating a nutrition vital city, role of multi-sectoral platforms. So I know there are colleagues who can significantly contribute in our round table so that we can actually uh, carry forward the task which actually Helen uh, previously told about the outputs and outcomes of this project. So Why actually we would like, we have to create a nutrition vital city? The degree of malnutrition among urban dwellers is frequently more severe than among their rural counterparts. While uh, developing this presentation yesterday, I was actually thinking about myself, all the city dwellers. So 30 years back, the World Bank reflected on the urban nutrition picture and published this statement. Today, more than ever, these words hold true. The world's cities have expanded as have the number of malnourished, but the face of urban malnutrition remains the same. This is a global picture. So, if you live in a city, you hit the left or right shop. It can be a super shop or it can be a small vendor's shop. But you end up with what you have in the shelves. So we all, the citizen of the cities are either helpless or vulnerable. This picture says a lot of things. This is the saga of the champions. Our women football team recently conquered the SAF tournament. So their story, I mean, came in many folds. 
the one of the interesting feature of this picture is why we have to invest in the vulnerable people. These all players actually come from the remotest uh, corner of Bangladesh and they all represent the vulnerable communities. People a uh, well off or better educated they do not send their daughters to, to play football in Bangladesh. So, these uh, this picture rationalizes that we have to invest in the vulnerable people and they are indomitable. But while I was actually interviewing the coach few days back, he told me uh, something very interesting which also reflected in some other newspapers. He told that the fitness coach did not allow these girls these players to go home during the holidays. The fitness coach said that if they go home, they reduce weight because the lack of food, because the lack of sufficient adequate healthy food. So, they remained in the camp during the, during the holidays, during Eid vacations. You know, we all know the Eid vacations, Puja vacations are so important in Bangladesh. So, if we invest in the vulnerable communities in the cities, in the rural areas, they will make us the same champions. They will actually defeat the odds in the society. So, now let us talk about little bit the role of multi stakeholder and multi sectoral uh, platforms. I mean, sometimes they write multi sectoral first, sometimes they write multi stakeholders platforms. Helen, can you, I mean, help me? I mean, which should come first? I do not know. So, uh, uh, basically, we all live in silos. When we work with organization, we actually make our own context and we look at the world in through the lenses we we have we contextualize so what we have to do is we have to actually see the light in the tunnels in the silos we know the all the stakeholders in the society they have their own strengths and weaknesses so we have to actually tap those strengths and we have to coordinate collaborate with all the stakeholders to actually bring light. If one single stakeholder is left behind, it creates a huge amount of pain. And in social seclusion, in social inclusion, when we do seclusion, it creates a lot of pain and agony in the community or in the person or the stakeholder of the institutions. When we include, it creates beauty. So, the role of multi-sectoral and multi-stakeholder platform is actually creating beauty of getting information and making informed decisions. And while we design and plan, we need also multi-stakeholder, multi-sectoral collab collaboration. We need partnership and for resource mobilization we also need collaboration. For policy advocacy, for achieving results and implementation and to achieve our national goal on nutrition in different contexts. We need this engagement of multi-stakeholder and multi-sectoral platforms, MSPs. So, <clears throat> WHO uh, suggests that people from all over the world should take healthy diet, which actually to protect us against malnutrition in all forms as well as non-communicable diseases including diabetes, heart disease, stroke and cancer. So, what we need, where do we get healthy diets? 
we actually have to look for agro ecologically produced food which actually Syngenta Foundation is doing here in Bangladesh. They have farmers hub, they have also uh, different platforms and networks formed by the farmers and children, students and communities. So, agroecologically produced food, who are the stakeholders? Please uh, come up with your own uh, ideas and your own information, your own expertise. We would like to identify these stakeholders, there can be farmers, they can be farms, they can be department of agriculture, department of fisheries, department of livestock services and the private sector. Making healthy diet affordable, who, who are the stakeholders, ministry of food, director of food, ministry of social welfare, ministry of women and children affairs, CPTU. Have you heard the name of CPTU? Any colleagues from Bangladesh? Central, Central Procurement Technical Union. This is a highly powerful uh, body in terms of procuring things. So, government actually procures a lot of food. So, you need to influence those, uh, uh, those people who actually uh, work in the CPTU. And development partners, of course, different development partners. Regulate, regulate processed food and trans fat, etc. I mean, uh, salt and uh, sugary drinks and other, I mean, uh, we, we may call them dirty foods, right? I mean, so Ministry of Health is concerned, BNCC colleagues are, I mean, uh, expecting colleagues from BNCC and Food Safety Authority. Our chief guest is from Food Safety Authority. So, uh, he, his institution can play a vital role here, Ministry of Commerce, Ministry of Commerce can uh, uh, raise bars and barriers, uh, tariff, non-tariff and complete, complete ban on food products and chemicals which actually are hazardous for public health. Am I audible to everybody colleagues? Okay. Yeah, it's okay, excellent. All right, so uh, I might uh, walk some time uh, in the interest of uh, looking at you and communicating with you. So, uh, the nutrition vital city and right to food. So, I will come to this point, but Ministry of Law is very relevant, Ministry of LGRD and Cooperative is relevant, City Corporation is relevant, where we, we talk about nutrition, creating nutrition vital cities in Bangladesh. And who is talking? Okay. Uh, nutrition overview continues, uh, malnutrition is one of the world's most serious but least addressed development challenge, its human and economic cost are enormous, falling hardest on the poor women and children. I mean the vulnerable group of the society, they bear the brunt of all hazards, all uh, seclusions. So, uh, uh, a lot, I mean still, still there are a lot of problem in the world, but malnutrition is the biggest menace. I mean it makes children stunted, I mean we will come to these uh, statistics later. So, 149 million children under 5 years old was stunted in 2020. So, this is the latest figure, which indicates not only a failure to achieve one's own uh, genetic uh, potential for height, but also a predictor of many other development constraints, including cognitive deficits. If somebody has cognitive deficit, his life is over. He, he, becomes, he becomes a banana. I mean, he cannot move properly, take a smart decisions when he loses his intelligence. Cannot, so, I mean, children drop out a lot in the poorer communities due to this I mean uh, def cognitive deficit. Future economic opportunities, he cannot engage in, in job, he cannot attain his skills, including impending uh, country's ability to accumulate human capital. So, so, we are what? We are the aggregate result of human capital, Bangladesh or any other country in the world. Undernutrition and obesity are critical to improving human capital, 
a central driver of sustainable growth and poverty reduction and can have significant effect on human capital index. So, this well, a lot of data is given from FAO, from World Bank. Uh, please excuse me if uh, I come up with any data which uh, is not relevant. Please correct me. So, nutrition over overview global is, uh, is continuing. 2 billion people lack access to safe, nutritious and uh, uh, sufficient food globally. 2 billion people. So, what is the total population of the world? Seven point seven. So it's almost one third, right? One fourth. Okay. Eight million deaths every year attributable to excess consumption of food high in sodium and salt. This is what I have been talking. Sugars and fats, particularly trans fat, fatty acid trans fats, and by inadequate consumption of whole grains, pulses vegetables and fruits. So, now Bangladesh, if you look at Bangladesh, Bangladesh nutrition sir, I would like to request you to pay attention on this, these statistics. Uh, Bangladesh uh, ranks 76th out of 116 countries in the global hunger index. 28 percent children under 5 are stunted and 10 percent acutely malnourished and wasted. So, if you actually uh, go for accuracy of this data and these are all taken from different international I mean BBS and UNICEF and ICD, some people are always go for window dressing in, 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 in some discussions and other things. So, they actually when CPD or other organization they come up with data, they say that no, this data is erroneous. Whatever you say, whatever length you try to reduce it, it will, uh, I mean, go for reduction only 0 to uh, 0, 0 0.5 percent to 1 percent. So, but these are brutal facts, these are brutal facts, we have to agree and we have to work on them. <coughs> Cycle of malnutrition and poverty, this is a vicious cycle, vicious cycle, it is killing people. Poor maternal nutrition, which is highly uh, prevalent in Bangladesh, especially among adolescent girls, contributes to an intergenerational cycle of malnutrition and poverty. This is very sad. If you go to a rural area, you will see that the young mothers are feeding their babies. Here you can see the picture. So, we always use good pictures which have a, a smile uh, on their faces. But if you go, anything wrong? Okay. Okay. So, if you go, I mean, at, and talk to them. Uh, affectionately or intimately you will get to know that they, these people are all suffering from a lot of diseases like anemia and then uh, uh, vitamin, vitamin deficiencies and other I mean setback. So, 50 percent of pregnant women and 40 percent of non-pregnant non-lactating women suffer from anemia. So, this is the statistics. 57 percent non-pregnant, non-lactating women are zinc deficient, 22 percent non-pregnant, non-lactating women are deficient in vitamin B12. Bangladesh nutrition overview of brutal facts continues. 4 percent of ever married women ages 15 to 19 years are under uh, underweight, 8 percent unmarried women ages 15 to 19 years are underweight. Okay. Unmarried and ever married. Okay. 16 percent ever married women and 10 percent of unmarried women ages 15 to 19 years are overweight or obese. This is a new phenomena in Bangladesh because of processed uh, food, because of sweet and sugary, I mean uh, sodium and salt and sweet and sugary beverages. There are a lot of toxic beverages available in the market now. <coughs> 
So this is the growing concern, obesity is the growing concern for Bangladesh, 38% uh, uh, in uh, 2019, 38% adolescent girls had begun childbearing by 19 years. So this is a very recent data, this is also provided by BBS and UNICEF, 50% increased risk of steel births and uh, neonatal deaths, steel births I mean the baby is born dead or I mean uh, they die immediately after birth, okay. So neonatal deaths is I mean uh, post uh, delivery deaths and an increased risk of low birth weight which is also I mean a very dangerous, <coughs> a very dangerous symptom, low birth, uh, low birth weight. 23% uh, low birth weight uh, uh, very high in Bangladesh, 23% uh, okay. low birth weight is very high in Bangladesh uh, at 23%. So uh, uh, premature birth, uh, asphyxia and maternal mortality these are also prevalent. So if we want to uh, stop all this, we have to actually focus on the food system. Food systems uh, evolved over 20th century in response to increasing and changing food demand. Now linked to its serious and persistent problems worldwide including diet related bad health outcomes, excessive greenhouse uh, gas emissions, environmental degradation, biodiversity loss food losses and waste exacerbated by long term change factors such as climate change, urbanization, population increase and consumerism and corporate greed. Food system is very complex and it has a lot of complexity. So issues posed by food system as complex adaptive socio-ecological systems vulnerable to non-linear uh, such as complex systems cannot be comprehended by examining individual occurrences. It is vital to think and act systematically to address the numerous vulnerabilities that influence food system and to identify the spectrum of actors who need to be involved in transformative process. Therefore, to comprehend, a com comprehend the complexity and facilitate interventions, multi-sectoral and multi-stakeholder platforms uh, initiative is a must, otherwise we cannot solve this problem. And that is why today we have arranged this round table. Urban food system in Bangladesh, local government city corporation act 2009. Uh, th th there is no mention of right to food, nutrition security, urban agriculture, etc. In section 50, there are 14 permanent committee including health, sports, culture, social, welfare and community center. So I worked with the city corporation mayors and Purushava mayors and I spoke to them with help they understand vaccination, with help they understand I mean. Uh, providing some uh, delivery um, pregnancy related support by the uh, nurses and other people. They do not actually, they are completely blank about the, uh, because there is no committee about the nutrition and healthy diet and agriculture also. So FAO is implementing the improving Dhaka food systems project in Dhaka, my colleagues are here, I am very proud of them, Dhaka, Gajipur and Narangan city to make fresh, nutritious, safe and affordable food available to the city corporation. Local government division, the ministry of local government and rural uh, cooperatives leads the project implementation, but the city corporation act is not amended yet. Without legal framework, you cannot actually make sustainable you cannot actually create a dent in the system. So urban food system Bangladesh is so nice, I mean uh, already uh, Helen spoke about it, so I will not repeat this. So, so nice is actually working in Rangpur and Dinaspur 
and they are trying to solve the city nutrition, healthy diet, uh, uh, these problems through uh, producing agroecological. So, they are working on both the supply side and the demand side and the, the project work and is, is very vibrant. Urban agriculture, urban fisheries, livestock. So, there are three uh, significant departments, only one department urban agriculture has this metropolitan Krishi officer Karjal, I am Helen and uh, other colleagues, I am sorry you can't read Bangla, Bangla is a very easy language but not a lot of people understand this. Okay. So, uh, this is the actually office of the uh, Metropolitan Agricultural Officer. Uh, only agriculture ha uh, uh, department have this, not fisheries, not the livestock, although there is a huge opportunity and demand for agriculture, uh, livestock and fisheries in the cities. I cannot show you that this is a very intricate thing. I actually made a hyperlink with this uh, presentation, but oh, is there? Will it work? I do not know. Okay, let us see. No, it will not work because I changed the laptop. All right, I am sorry for that. Let us see whether it works or not. So, Global Food Security Index 2022, here you can see the picture of Bangladesh. This is actually an uh, initiative of uh, Economic Intelligence Unit of uh, the, the very esteemed uh, international magazine, The Economist. So, if we, if we try to go to the website, let us see whether it brings it, yeah, it brought it. So, the overall score of Bangladesh Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can anybody help me technically? I mean, okay. What I have to do is I have to close it, right? Robhai? Act to rescue Karan. Mane acta ke ye kore acta ke dite hobe, tai na? Okay. 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 It's a hyperlink for your slower case. It'll show close core then, close core then, close core then. It's a forever cool wash. Okay, excellent. Now we can see this, right? So, this is you can see this is a uh, economist impact uh, from the very esteemed um, newspaper. Uh, magazine and the economist so they publish this global food security index every year so this is the report of today. this is live i am showing you live so overall score of bangladesh sir this is the uh, food uh, global food security index uh, published by uh, the economist famous newspaper economist and supported by Kotiba. Kotiba is a agri science, uh, is, I mean, very respected uh, organization. So, Bangladesh actually, <coughs> overall score, o, score of Bangladesh is uh, hmm, it ranks 80th. So, out of 113 countries. And if we look at affordability of food, it ranks 87th, 87th. So, if we look at availability of food, uh, we score better here, 46th, 46th. So, uh, it all actually is contribution of the farmers and our agriculture department and other, other departments. So, this is the quality and safety, sir, you need to look here, I mean the, our rank is 71st in the quality and safety. Okay. So, in the interest of time, I will not go further and then this is uh, 
sustainability and adaptation. I we can go uh, for this uh, affordability thing here you can see the red lines I mean where we actually are in the border line or we cross the border line and then if you look at this food safety net programs I will talk about this later you see uh, our rank is 72 okay. Oh, Bangladesh is uh, yeah mean average is 72 we are on we have only 26.8 very very low very very low. So, availability also you see I mean access to agricultural inputs here also we have problems and then we have problems in supply chain infrastructure problems in supply, but I would like to focus on as because our chief guest is from is the chairman of from the uh, Bangladesh food safety authority. Food safety authority uh, you know that is recently formed um, colleagues from Bangladesh they know it, know it very well. It is a, a very new organization, but it is trying to actually uh, uh, provide uh, deliver services to the uh, citizen st stakeholders and business people. So, uh, sir we have problem here uh, in, in the quality and safety. If you look at the dietary diversity, you see uh, we rank really poorly. If we ask someone in Bangladesh what did you eat in the morning, he will say rice and mashed potato. What in the afternoon? Rice and dal, I mean lentil and then maybe vegetable or a piece of fish or a piece of meat, maybe not meat. But the vulnerable community they do not afford to actually get those things and in the night again rice, again mashed potato or something or lentil. So, repetitive uh, the, the habit of taking and lack of food diversity is a great problem and this is reflected in the international index. So, we need to improve here nutritional standard here we are doing good. So, colleagues from BNCC they are here and also from Dhaka University. So, B, I mean uh, in nutritional standard we have developed a lot of lot of I mean policies and other I mean uh, so we have papers ready for nutrition. You know the BNCC is chair BNNC BN I am I'm, I'm really sorry I apologize I apologize I know, but I mean BNNC okay. B and N C. So, it is led by uh, chaired by our Prime Minister, uh, Her Excellency uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. So, uh, it is a very powerful uh, organization, they are doing a lot of interesting work. All right. So, micronutrient availability, if you see here where our our standard is very poor. So, we are we are in paper, but if in implementation we are very fragile. Okay. So, mean average is 67 point e, uh, we are uh, I mean uh, 49 and then protein quality again you see our standard is uh, it is far below and food safety food safety in terms of food safety mean average is 76.4 and our just a shortfall 76 is because of the contribution of the uh, food safety authority, but the the concern among the uh, academia and the uh, experts and the practitioners is really 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 high. So, uh, let us uh, delve into more. So, from here actually we went to let us uh, now see uh, what a good uh, food system can yield for a community. So, it, it uh, gives us a better production this is a APO document colleague and then the better nutrition and better environment and better life. So, at last we get a better life life expectancy and other things. So, see how many SDGs are linked with this. 
And then at the right side you see the daily star, I mean report on food adulteration rings alarm bell. Okay. So but this is a very recent, very recent round table arranged by RDRS is a one of the uh, uh, biggest NGO in Bangladesh. Uh, jointly organized seminar on hazards of food contamination in national life way forward. So, views about the uh, proportion of adulterated food items on the market varied between 70 to 90 percent. Okay. And then, then you have this a doctor Mr. S. K. Roy, he said that uh, he is from ICDDRB. He said that I mean these poisons residues in food items leave the worst impact on children's mental and psychological growth and women's fertility, causes cancer and damages vital human organs like liver, kidney and heart. All right. So, it continues this saga of food adulteration continues unsafe, unsafe food is continues. So, this is uh, these are all doctors they actually arranged uh, a press briefing radiotherapy department of Dhaka medical college they said that the 1.5 million cancer patients in Bangladesh and is growing is growing and due to food alteration is they, there is no scientific basis because no PhD research or academic research is done as such. But all actually points finger to uh, food adulteration. Sometimes the experience is more, I mean it gives you more knowledge and information than a research work. So, from the experience the doctors and experts are saying that the food adulteration is the leading cause of cancer, kidney disease, liver disease, I mean uh, hep uh, hepatitis uh, B and other non-communicable diseases which can actually make a family ruin proper in, 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 in a course of 4 to 5 years time. So, it continues and then there are reports of uh, finding traces of pesticide in cow milk and also in breast milk. Now, these are our national goals. SDG by 2031 and then upper middle income we want to achieve all the I mean like other countries Helen you country and Cornelia you country and other colleagues from I mean we have also. Okay. So, how much time? Okay. Sir. So, <coughs> I will try to be brief, very brief. Okay, so, the upper middle income country by 2031 perspective plan Bangladesh vision 2041 are developed country by 2041 smart Bangladesh by 2014 smart Bangladesh is meaning I mean this is a digital vision and also they have incorporated that will become a knowledge economy by 2041 which is uh, really Bangladesh achieved a, a MDGs successfully and GDP growth and development we achieved and then we have commitments international uh, covenant on economic and social rights there we, we agreed to establish right to food. Uh, member of global uh, scaling up nutrition sun movement we are member to end malnutrition and international conference on food and nutrition world food summit. Uh, Bangladesh ranks 15th as a moderately committed country in Hanchi while in hunger reduction commitment index poorly uh, at 30th. So, we rank 30th and then 5th in nutrition commitment index. So, our uh, again you can see that nutrition commitment is high. Everything depends on food system. The attainment of several SDGs, especially first three goals reducing poverty, hunger, and ensuring healthy health and well being is linked with the performance of local and global food system. So, this is, a, uh, this is actually taken from a research. Uh, this link between SDG and food system sustainability is reaffirmed by the UN Food System Summit vision which promise to make progress on all 70 sustainable development goals each of which depends on healthier sustainable and more equitable food systems. So, 
Bangladesh is actually participated in all these conferences. Major challenge and way out. Now, I'm, I, I give you a very, 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 very shocking information is that right to food is not is not mentioned in our constitution as fundamental rights. It is mentioned in the fundamental principle. So, the Ayn uh, Shalish Kendra and then this is uh, legal age organization Helen and our colleagues uh, and then uh, the other organization uh, led by Dr. Kamal Hussain and what is the name of that organization? Okay. So, uh, Sarah Hussain, Barrister Sarah Hussain, they also did a thorough research on right to food and there is a uh, network uh, run by Mr. Mohsin. Mohsin Ali is also executive director of an NGO. They are also uh, doing a lot of activism to establish right to food for the last 15 or uh, I mean 20 years. So, you have to work on that if we want to actually include all the vulnerable communities in Bangladesh uh, under the food security umbrella. No coherent policy framework for food system in Bangladesh, it needs uh, transformation to ensure healthy diets. Uh, multi sector platforms are required among different sectors, government agencies, development partners and private sector. While I uh, conducted a recent research we found out that there is a significant lack of coordination among a lot of government agencies. Some government agencies think that they are wiser, they are smarter than other government agencies and they expect that the other government agency will come to them. So, uh, this is our uh, findings and the collaboration among government ministries and agencies is a must for developing a policy framework for urban food system. Ministry of Food and Local Government. So, Ministry of Food, sir, this is your ministry. Ministry of Food and Local Government Division has to work in unison to develop the nutrition vital cities in Bangladesh. Thank you very much for your patient hearing, and I am really sorry because we are a bit late in terms of. Uh, so, as a moderator, I, I beg your applause again dear colleagues and ladies and gentlemen. So, we have uh, two new uh, guests here. So, uh, uh, for the interest of time, we will not ask them to introduce th themselves, but uh, now I would like to request our uh, chief guest Mr. Abdul Kaim Shorkar to deliver his uh, discussion or his speech. So, be comfortable. Mic to sir, to shamne nita hoye. Can mic take to proximity chai. Let me assist you, sir. Apne kotha bola. Shuru kore, sir. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Here present, Dr. Hassan Shahriyar Shahriyar Kobir, DG, Bangladesh National Nutrition Council. Mr. Wad, uh, Abdul Wad, executive, executive director, additional secretary, but Minister of Agriculture, Ms. Helen, Health of Health System Unit, Swiss TPH, Professor Dr. Joshimuddin, Horticulture Department, Sherebangla Agriculture University, Dr. Khalada Islam, Director, Institute of Nutrition and Food Science, Dhaka University, keynote speaker, Hamidul Haq Khan, CU, HK Consulting, sir. representatives from different government and private organizations, experts and media personnel, Assalamu alaikum. Firstly, I thank to all for your kind presence in the roundtable discussion on creating national nutrition vital city, rule of multi-sectoral uh, sectoral platforms organized by Syngenta Foundation for sustainable agriculture and agriculture 
under the project of nutrition and city ecosystems, NIC project funded by Swiss Agency of Development and Cooperation, SDC. I feel very privileged to attend this program. Also, thanks to Business Standard Limited and uh, Syngenta Foundation to organize this roundtable conference. At the beginning, um, here we gather to discuss a very timely and important topic to promoting nutrition rich and safe food across the country, especially city dwellers or urban people through applying rule of multi-sectoral platform. Food safety is a complicated and global issue. In the current context, global food management system has become quite diverse, especially in processed food. In this context, Food Safety Act 2013 was enacted. Bangladesh and from 2015, Bangladesh Food Safety Authority started to work. Bangladesh Food Safety Authority is working at very level, at every level of food chain to enforce the law. By the mandate of law, we are working to promote nutrition-rich, safe food for ensuring public health. The BFSA is dedicated to achieve its historical, uh, historic goal of creating a science-based adequate food safety management system in Bangladesh in order to support the government vision of 2041 SDG 2030. Through the NIC project, the overall goals are to contribute to improve nutrition among consumers, especially in city, for city dwellers, including the most vulnerable ones, living in urban, peri-urban, and rural areas with a view to accessing local, safe, nutritious, diverse, and affordable food. Through this food security of the of this country is seem to be improved as well as the health and nutrition. I think the most specialized feature of this project is to ensure a strong focus on women, young, and other vulnerable groups, especially in the northern region of the country. Bangladesh is progressing rapidly and as a result, it produces a huge variety of food and agricultural products. About more than 100 types of grains, fruits, and vegetables are exported from Bangladesh to more than 40 countries in the world. Although several measures were already taken to improve the food quality and safety, but there are still some measures to be taken to the sustainable improvement of food and agricultural products. So measures to be taken to the sustainable improvement of food and agricultural products. So the NIC project has lot more to carry on to improve the current situation. In this context, compre uh, comprehensive uh, uh, the in interconnected and interdependent relationship among the food system actors and stakeholders would rectify the nutrition level of food system, sensitizing the relevant government line agencies and policy institutions, international and private organizations through interconnected system will added gesture of this program. Moreover, Bangladesh Food Safety Authority is currently working with this relevant topic of developing current food safety system, food system with various different government and international organizations like FAO, USDA, USAID, etc. Moreover, the government has also taken many mass friendly decisions and runs specialized programs to maintain the food security with nutrition-rich, safe food. 
First, the COVID-19 situation, then the war situation in Europe creates turmoil in the whole world, especially in the line of food security. Though Bangladesh is in a far better situation, still there are a lot more to carry on. For this reason, initiatives like this program should be carried out properly. The government has already successfully progress the COVID situation by maintaining proper food security, it will pass the rest successfully. Above all, I believe that the efforts of every stakeholder, we will be able to make Bangladesh Bangabandhu's vision of building a happy and prosperous Sunar Bangla a reality by building a healthy nation so the spread of nutrition-rich, safe food. Finally, I hope today's discussion may achieve a great success for finding the way of proper management of food security in terms of living standards and food safety, especially for rural areas, the pilot to pilot uh, city, the Dinaspur and the Rangpur. I would like to thank all concerned for inviting me to this fun, uh, function today and conclude my speech by thanking all. Let us work together to make Bangladesh affluent and developed. Thank you all. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, sir, for your uh, very elaborate and suggestive uh, speech. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, our chief guest, uh, would like to leave early. So, sir, feel free to uh, leave whenever you are. Let us start our panel discussion. Panel discussion on creating nutrition vital city, a role of multi sector platforms. Our panelists are today, uh, uh, sir, you are in the panel list also. So, you can start the discussion and then we can go. So, in the panel discussion, you may go uh, both in Bangla and English if you feel like, I mean, uh, to speak few things in Bangla. If you cannot, uh, I mean, if you are comfortable speaking in Bangla, we allow you to speak in Bangla in the, we want a very engaging discussion. So, our panelists are Mr. Abdul Kaim Sharka, Chairman, Bangladesh Food Safety Authority, Mindy Mahabur Rahman, Research Director, Food Planning and Monitoring uh, Unit, uh, FPMU, Ministry of Food, Dr. Hassan Shahariar Kabir, DG, Bangladesh National Nutrition Council. I apologize for, I mean, not pronouncing B, N, N, C properly. Professor MD Joshimuddin, Horticulture Department, Sher Bangla Agriculture University, and uh, Mr. M.D. Abdul Wadud, Executive Director, Additional Secretary, Barton. Sir, you are here, right? So, Ministry of Agriculture, Mr. Shahiduddin uh, Akbar, Chief Executive Director, Bangladesh Institute of ICT and Development. Mr. Shahiduddin Akbar. Is yeah. uh, Xavier Bowen, Senior Technical Advisor, Dhaka Food System. Javier. Uh, Dr. Nassim, uh, Managing Director, Winal, uh, yeah, BD, Kondokar Golam Muazzam, Research Director, Center for Policy Dialogue, and HM Jahirul Islam, CEO, destroys his absence. So, uh, could you, uh, okay, Fahad Bhai will be there. So, uh, let us take the privilege of including Fahad Bhai, <coughs> Mr. Farad Jamil, contractor in to include in the panelists. So, uh, I'd like to request the panelists to to take seat over here. To to come forward here, I mean to take seat here. It would be better because you have to uh, discuss. Um, you would like to remain in your seat. All right. So, uh, <laughs> excellent. Uh, I mean, little bit of walk and standing up is good for health because we are working on yeah healthy diet and yeah nutrition. So uh, I would like to request uh, Mr. Abdul Kamim Sharka sir uh, to start the uh, discussion. 
from your end. Please tell us uh, what your commitment and your opinion about this multi-sectoral stakeholder engagement. Amrajit is sir, to Banglai boli ta hole boli je ki bhabe amra. I am sorry, I beg your apology, Helen and Cornelia and Javier. I have to sometimes speak in Bangla now. So, amra ki bhabe ekta khube karjo kori multi-stakeholder, multi-sectoral at a platform to record the parade to create a nutrition vital city in Bangladesh. Uh, a vicious are after organization to act a border role play, play correct in the Minister of Food Director Border Role. Let's say so. Apijo to Chairman uh, Bangladesh Food Safety Authority at the same time you are also uh, representing Ministry of Food because you are additional secretary. So, how actually you see this multi sectoral. There is a serious gap of coordination between Ministry of Health and Ministry of Ministry of Agriculture and Ministry of Food and Ministry of Fisheries, Livestock and Fisheries and other ministries. And there is no such thing like uh, urban food system in Bangladesh. My colleagues at FAO, they are working on it and colleagues from NICE project, they are working on it. So, we would like to hear from you, sir. Your co opinions and comments. Or commitments, maybe, yeah. I mean, do you have to say that? I mean, it's a good thing to say that I'm not there. The more line, check out the deck and the other shell. It taken to echo Babe for safety authority gave died to the money monetary echo. Babe, I think it's a good thing to say that. Or not to a motor, I can a ball out. We will ensure food safety uh, uh, um, uh, all over the country by cord in a coordination way. I am not the chef. Uh, I am not the local government. I the local government. I am not the local I am the local government. I am not the local government. I am not the local government. Tara food the 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 contamination থাকে আমি পরবর্তীতে যতই মেজার নেই একটু থেকে সেভ করা সম্ভব না এই কারণে আমরা কোঅর্ডিনেশনটাকে গুরুত্ব দিয়েছি আমাদের চেয়ারম্যানের নেতৃত্বে একটা সমন্বয় কমিটি রয়েছে যেখানে আমরা বছরে দুই তিনটা করে মিটিং করি সেখানে সব দপ্তরের লোকজন আছেন আমরা কোঅর্ডিনেশনের বিষয়গুলো নিয়ে কথা বলি আমাদের খাদ্যমন্ত্রী মহোদয়ের নেতৃত্বে একটা উপদেষ্টা a concern minister, Sochip, cabinet, Sochip, Sar Shaho, Onara, Onara, Peter Sodusho, among local government, Mayor Hodega, Asentaro, Eta Sodusho, among the Shangsta Gulu, Shokari, Doctor Gulu Pasco, Tata Kodango, Shakana Shodu, Shakana Rope, Gulune Kotabuli, among Shaman and Vishaki Guru today. Jodu Ekta organization Bangladesh Food Safety and Sure Kora, Mane Daikuda, Hoche Food Safety and Sure Kora, Kokonoi, Coordination Sarah Shambogna, Ekishatu to the Sharkari, Nagashakari, Porja, Jara Food Safety Nets Task Force, and the Shatuamra, Shaman Nodar of Nakoto, Lachestakuri, Jano, Shabat Shaman with the Kartu from my Dumi Amra, Mother Jay Target, as a Shawaike Nirapod Abong. Amra 
বিভিন্ন আইনে বিভিন্ন রকম ভাবে বলা আছে ফুড রিলেটেড বিষয়গুলো নিয়ে এগুলোকে আমরা আইডেন্টিফাই করে একটা ইউনিক অবস্থা নিয়ে আসার জন্য আমরা কাজ করছি যেন এটার একই বিষয়ে বিভিন্ন আইনে বিভিন্ন রকম সংজ্ঞা বা বিভিন্ন বিষয় বলা না থাকে ডিসপারেটি যেন না থাকে আবার যেমন আমরা যেটা কাজ করছি এটাই মাল্টি সেক্টরাল জিনিসটি আমি বলছি যেমন আমাদের যারা নিউ জেনারেশন যারা ভবিষ্যতে বড় হবে এখন যারা স্কুল গই তাদের জন্য আমরা সিলেবাস কারেকশনের কাজ শুরু করে দিয়েছি অলরেডি এই বছর প্রাইমারিতে থ্রি থেকে ফাইভ পর্যন্ত এটা চলে আসবো যে ম্যাডাম রয়েছেন এখানে উনিও এই কমিটির মেম্বার হিসেবে আছেন তো এখানে আমরা যেটা যে নিউ জেনারেশনকে ছোট বয়স থেকেই এই সেফ এবং নিউট্রিশিয়াস ফুড সম্পর্কে তাদেরকে অ্যাওয়ার করা এবং আমরা আমাদের ধারণা যে তাদের মাধ্যমে তাদের যারা গার্জিয়ান রয়েছে তাদেরকে আমরা অ্যাওয়ার করতে পারবো তা আমরা এই কাজগুলো করছি এবং সামনে আরও কাজ হবে আমরা প্রথম উদ্যোগটা হলো সবার মধ্যে কোয়ার্ডিনেশন নিশ্চিত করা এবং দ্বিতীয় হইল যে সবগুলো আইনকে একসাথে নিয়ে একটা প্ল্যাটফর্মে নিয়ে আসা একটা ইউনিক অবস্থায় নিয়ে আসা যেন বিভিন্ন আইনে বিভিন্ন রকম ব্যাখ্যা না থাকে বিভিন্ন আইনে বিভিন্ন রকম কথা না থাকে এটা এনসিওর করতে না পারলে আসলে এখানে ডিসপারিটি থাকবে বিভিন্ন ধরনের ভুল ব্যাখ্যা হওয়ার সম্ভাবনা থাকবে আর সরকারি বেসরকারি যে সংস্থা আছে তাদেরকে সমন্বয় করা হয় এটা আমাদের অন্যতম কাজ কারণ এককভাবে আঠারো বা ষোলো কোটি যেটাই আমরা বলি যে সবার নিউট্রিশন এবং সেফ ফুড নিশ্চিত করা এটা কঠিন কাজ আর আমরা জানি যে আপনারা যে কাজ বিষয়টা নিয়ে কাজ করছেন যে রুট লেভেলে আমরা যদি সিটি ডুয়েলাররা বলি যে তারা একটু ভালনার এবং কন্ডিশনে আছে আমি রংপুরে দীর্ঘদিন ছিলাম আমি জানি যে সেখানে ভালনার এবং কন্ডিশনটা কি কারণ সিটি ডুয়েলাররা কনজামশন করে কিন্তু তারা প্রোডাকশন করে না তারা ফুড প্রোডাকশন করে না কিন্তু তারা কনজামশন করে তাদেরকে ডিপেন্ডেন্ট করতে হয় যারা প্রডিউসার এবং যারা সাপ্লায়ার তাদের উপরে তাহলে তারা যদি সে সঠিকভাবে প্রডিউস না করে এবং সঠিকভাবে যদি সাপ্লাই চেনটা মেনটেন না করে এবং আমরা জানি যে ফুড চেইন যেটা ভ্যালু চেইন আছে যে এটার যে কোনো লেভেলে যে কোনো ধরনের কন্ট্রামিনেশন হওয়ার সুযোগ আছে এবং সেই একবার যদি কন্ট্রামিনেশন হয় পরবর্তীতে যতই মেজার নেই এই ফুডটা সেফ রাখা একটু কঠিন কাজ তো এটা একটা ভালো কাজ আমি মনে করি কারণ সিটি ডুয়েলার্স আমরা জানি যে আমাদের দেশে অনেক বেড়েছে সাম্প্রতিককালে কিন্তু তাদের জন্য সেফ ফুড এনসিওর করা এবং এটার জন্য আমি মনে করি যে আপনাদের যে প্রজেক্টটা যে এখানে আমাদের এই সাপ্লাই চেনটাকে একটু ছোটো করে নিয়ে আসা যায় কিনা ফুড চেনটাকে একটু ছোটো করে নিয়ে আসা যায় কিনা আমরা যেরকম ইউরোপে দেখি যে প্রডিউসাররা সরাসরি তাদের ফার্মে প্রোডাকশন করতেছে সেখানে তারা সেফটি এনসিওর করে সরাসরি ডিপার্টমেন্টাল স্টোরে দিয়ে দিচ্ছে সেখান থেকে কনজিউমার নিয়ে নিচ্ছে এটা কিন্তু অনেক ছোট কিন্তু আমাদের দেশে অনেকগুলো মিডলম্যান অনেকগুলো স্কোপ আছে এগুলো কন্ট্রামিনেশন হওয়ার এটা দিকেও একটু নজর দেওয়া যায় আর যারা প্রডিউসার বা ভিলেজ লেভেলে যারা উৎপাদন করবে যেহেতু কৃষিতে এবং অন্যান্য ক্ষেত্রে আমরা এখন গুড প্র্যাকটিসেস চর্চা শুরু করেছি সেটা প্রয়োগ করে উৎপাদন পর্যায়ে যদি এটা আমরা এনসিওর করতে পারি তাইলেও আমাদের সিটি ডুয়েলারদের জন্য আমরা এই সেফ এবং নিউট্রিশিয়াস ফুড এনসিওর করতে পারবো আর খাদ্যাভ্যাস একটা বড় জিনিস আমরা যে আমাদের একটা গাইডলাইন করছি নির্দেশিকা সব সবার জন্য সেখানে আমাদের একটা জায়গার টপিকসের নাম যে সর্বত্রই শর্ট করা আসলে যে কোনো খাবারেই আমরা যাই না কেন সেখানে দেখা যায় শর্ট শর্ট করার পরিমাণ বেশি অন্যান্য সাইড যেগুলো আছে সেগুলোর দিকে আমরা গুরুত্ব দিই কম যেটা আপনি দেখিয়েছেন যে ফুটবল কোচ ভয় পেয়েছে তার প্লেয়ারদেরকে তাদের বাড়িতে প্রেরণ করার জন্য কারণ সেখানে গিয়ে সে বাড়ির যে খাবার খাবে তিন দিনই হয়তো দেখা যাবে তার শরীরে অনেক পরিবর্তন চলে আসছে তার যে স্টেমিনা বা অন্যান্য কিছু ঘাটতি দেখা দিচ্ছে এইটা আমাদের দূর করতে হবে এই ফুড হ্যাবিটটা আমাদের চেঞ্জ করতে হবে শুধু রাইস না রাইসের সাথে যে অন্যান্য ফল সহ অন্যান্য সবজি এবং অন্যান্য বিষয়গুলো রয়েছে যেমন আমরা ইউরোপে যাই বা যেখানে যাই আমি তো সে খাদ্যাভ্যাস রেখেছি তারা ছোট্ট একটা পেয়ালার মধ্যে নির্দিষ্ট পরিমাণ ভাত দিক রাইস দিক বা পটেটো ফ্লেক্স ম্যাশ দিক বা যেটাই দিক একটা নির্দিষ্ট পরিমাণ দিবে বাকিটা আমাকে মিট ফ্রুটস এবং ভেজিটেবল দিয়ে কভার করতে হবে 
এইভাবে আমাদের দেশে আমরা এই জিনিসটাতে আসতে পারি আমি মনে করি যে সিনজেনটা এখানে একটা ভালো ভূমিকা পালন করতে পারে এবং এইভাবে আমাদের যদি ফুড অভ্যাসটাও আমরা চেঞ্জ করতে পারি শুধু প্রোডাকশন না অভ্যাসটাও চেঞ্জ করতে পারি তাইলে নিউট্রিশিয়াস হেলদি এবং সেফ ফুডের যে বিষয়টা এটা আমরা অনেকটা নিশ্চিত করতে সক্ষম হব এটাই আমার আপাতত বক্তব্য ধন্যবাদ থ্যাংক ইউ স্যার আপনি স্যার আর একটু থাকলে আমাদের জন্য একটু ভালো হবে বিকজ এই আপনি রাইট টু ফুডের কথা যেটা বলেছেন উই উইল অ্যাকচুয়ালি আস্ক ইউ যে হাউ উই অ্যাকচুয়ালি ইনকর্পোরেট দিস ইন দি অ্যাজ এ বেসিক রাইস ফান্ডামেন্টাল রাইস ইন দি কনস্টিটিউশন বিকজ ইট ইজ নট দেয়ার আমরা বলি যে আমাদের ডাইভার্সিটি লাগবে ডায়েটারি ডাইভার্সিটি কিন্তু অ্যাট দ্য সেম টাইম উই অ্যাকচুয়ালি হ্যাভ ভার্নারেবল কমিউনিটিস যারা ওই রাইসে পায় না ঠিক আছে অ্যান্ড ফুড ফ্রেন্ডলি প্রোগ্রাম আমাদের যে কলিগ এসেছে নিয়ে থেকে তার সাথেও আমরা কথা বলবো ফুড ফ্রেন্ড ফ্রেন্ডলি প্রোগ্রাম সোশ্যাল সিকিউরিটি প্রোগ্রামস আর মেন ফর দি রুরাল এরিয়াস নট ফর দি সিটি এরিয়াস সিটিতে শুধু ও এম এসগুলো আছে সো হাউ ক্যান উই অ্যাকচুয়ালি ইন্ট্রোডিউস দ্যাম ইন দি সিটি আদারওয়াইজ দ্য সিটি ভার্নারেবল পিপল তারা কিন্তু ডাবল ট্রাবলে আছে অনেকেই কিন্তু কাজের জন্য শহরে এসেছে গ্রামের জমি হারিয়ে ঠিক আছে দে লস দে আর হোম স্টেড ইন দ্য ভিলেজ দেন দে মাইগ্রেটেড টু দ্য টাউন সো দে আর অ্যাকচুয়ালি ডাবল ইয়ে ঠিক তাদের জন্য কিন্তু আপনার ইয়ে নেই সো উইথ দিস পলিসি ইমপ্লিকেশন হিন্ট লেট মি ইনভাইট মাই কলিগ ফ্রম সেন্টার ফর পলিসি ডায়ালগ দিস ইজ দি অ্যাপেক্স পলিসি ইনস্টিটিউশনস ইন বাংলাদেশ মিস্টার খন্দকার গোলাম ওয়াজেম রিসার্চ ডিরেক্টর Uh, thank you. Uh, as I said earlier that I am not an expert on this topic. I came here to learn about uh, these issues. So what I learned today? I think that my first learning is that uh, uh, since Bangladesh is now graduating from least developed country to developing country, so it, it needs to have a same source of graduation in terms of the food uh, intake point of view. From Uh, food safety, uh, from food security to food safety and the more uh, correctly uh, nutritional issues. So we need to have a graduation in terms of So I have given a presentation, I have given a presentation, I have given a presentation. The future course of action, how government uh, and the private sector civil society and development partners could jointly work together Uh, in terms of ensuring uh, uh, nutritional issues and the food safety issues more and more concretely uh, since the country is becoming a developing country uh, within uh, next couple of years. So this is my first lesson to hear. I think the second lesson what I, I got from today's discussion is that uh, along with that uh, we need to have uh, specific preparations and of course we, we, we have lack of awareness and knowledge but we don't also have a uh, lack of understanding about the food standards. What sorts of standards uh, that are, are there, we meaning that the value objects are there in different kinds of foods. And that need to be uh, very much uh, to be, be aware by the people, by the consumers, as well as by the producers, by the suppliers at, at all levels. So in the whole supply chain level, how the standardization issue could be uh, uh, introduced is uh, will, be a, uh, will be a major initiative that we could actually take into consideration. So this is my sec uh, second lesson. Third, in your presentation, I, I, I found that uh, my, my realization is such that uh, we are taking actually three kinds of food. One is the fresh food, another is uh, processed food, and another is prepared food. Uh, particularly in the context of the urban consumers' point of view. And more and more, urban consumers are uh, turning more shifting towards process and uh, prepared uh, food context. And you have seen, shown it, that how the department store, even in the vendor store, is also full of processed foods and the prepared foods are up there. So the standard issue, what we are actually saying, the food safety, what we are actually saying is, uh, of course, related to that aspects as well. So, uh, yeah, so the value chain aspect, so if I link it with the, with the value chain, then this value chain uh, will, will come uh, at three levels. One is the product-based value sure, chain, sure, sure, sure. another is the processing-based value chain issue, another is, of course, the, of course uh, partly processing, but uh, that's also related to the import, uh, import-based products that we are actually consuming here, and, and, the next, and then standards, 
uh, is also important to take into account. So this is my third lesson uh, 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 of coming here uh, in, in this case. So while you are proposing a uh, MSP, my realization is that uh, it should be MSP through MSP, meaning that multi-stakeholder platform and thereby it should go to multi-sectoral uh, multi platform. So it may go to that multi-sectoral platform through multi-stakeholder platform. It should be like that. Uh, and, uh, and you have already identified a number of the areas that how the MSPs could work. I think those are very pertinent and very right. But uh, if you could realize uh, your activities and engagement here in Bangladesh, you understand that uh, uh, it, uh, coordination is not a very easy job in, in case of Bangladesh. Very easy to say, but very, very difficult here uh, uh, in, uh, to ensure coordination in Bangladesh. Every ministry department are, are, are doing uh, their works based on their uh, uh, terms of reference. And they do not want to work with, uh, uh, with those which are not mentioned in the terms of reference. That is true. And they also do not want, want, uh, want to work with other organizations in terms of the same terms of reference. So there is a competitive issue and there is a lack of complementarity issue in terms of working uh, in, a, in a coordinated approach. So although you were mentioning about a, uh, about a, uh, about a coordination issue, but I would say uh, uh, instead of actually jumping to the very bigger coordination issue, let's actually start with the platform approach. And, and that platform approach should start with just discussion, uh, information sharing, and uh, and the uh, and the other things that you have mentioned: planning, designing, and the part partnership, resource mobilization, and implementation. Those will actually come gradually. So I think uh, the platform approach is, will be very good. And as I heard from the uh, the Food Safety Authority is uh, ch uh, chair, is that they regularly sit uh, with other ministries. So there is an interministerial approach already there. What I'd like to actually request here, not to confine it with the ministries only, but to, uh, 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 but to uh, uh, include the other stakeholders, very important stakeholders, development partners, uh, then the, uh, then the uh, uh, other uh, uh, foundations are, who are actually working on these issues, private sector, uh, CSOs, NGOs, who could also come together uh, in, in the same discussion. Maybe in the inter, inter uh, ministerial discussion may come, may come separately, but it should actually be have a separate platform uh, with a public-private approach uh, where all kinds of stakeholders could sit at least six months uh, uh, a year and discuss uh, various kinds of issues of their progress where it needs to work with together. That is my final lesson from today's discussion here is that, uh, is that I think it, it, uh, in terms of the city level, um, uh, food uh, safety and the food, secure, uh, food nutritional issues, I think more responsibility should go to the local government uh, uh, organizations than to the ministries or the departments. It is not so can easy. I, can, I, can I interrupt you here? Yes, please. Probably you could not follow. I mean, the local government will function based on their mandate, right? The local government act 2009. I'm there's actually, I'm actually mentioning that. Now. There's nothing, nothing, yes, now, now I'm nothing actually, written there. Yes, no yes. committees. Yes. Now I'm actually mentioning your point is that. So in order to, uh, for that, uh, it needs to strengthen the local government, both through the legally and as it has been mentioned in the presentation that the uh, it's a terms of reference and its uh, legal uh, legal uh, part is also not uh, allow it to work on, on those new areas. So it needs to amend the local government act. Uh, so how this new platform can work in the future, not only on the operational issues, but also on the institutional issues, as well as on the legal issues. So these are all my lessons for attending to this very important discussion. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. J. Local government is the short answer. Local government, actually, our strengthening local government, the government project is not only about the cost. কিন্তু আমরা জানি আসলে এখন স্ট্র্যান্ডেন তারা হয় না অন্তত মডার্ন দিক থেকে এখন স্ট্র্যান্ডেন হয় না কারণ এখন তারা ট্যাক্স কালেকশন করতে ভয় পায় অন্যান্য কাজ আপনি ইউনিয়ন পরিষদে যান সিটি কর্পোরেশন যান পৌরসভা যান স্ট্যান্ডিং কমিটি কিন্তু ওখানে আইনের মাধ্যমে ম্যান্ডেটরি করা এবং স্ট্যান্ডিং কমিটিগুলো যদি আপনি দেখেন প্রত্যেকটা এই ফুড নিউট্রিশন এগুলো সবগুলো রিলেটেড কমিটি আছে এবং এগুলো ফুল ফাংশনিং হওয়ার কথা 
এবং ওই কমিটির মাধ্যমে ওই এলাকার ওই কাজটা সে এনসিওর করবে তাদেরকে এটা অলরেডি তাদেরকে জামে দুটো এটা হ্যান্ড ওভার করা আছে সে লোকাল গভর্নমেন্ট এটা ফিলো করে না তার এর বুঝতে পারে না এবং ওই স্ট্যান্ডিং কমিটিগুলোকে অ্যাকটিভ করে না এটা মনে হয় এটা আমাদের আরো হয়তো সময় লাগবে কিন্তু এটা যেমন আমি ইউএসএ তে গিয়েছি সেখানে আমরা জানি যে আমাদের ইউনিয়ন পরিষদ যেটা তারা সিটি गवर्नमेंट বলে আমি এরকম দুইটা আই হ্যাভ ভিজিটেড টু সিটি गवर्नमेंट ইন ইউএসএ ইন আলাবামা স্টেট সেখানে দেখেছি যে এখানে সরকারের প্রয়োজন নয় সিটি गवर्नमेंटই সব করতেছে এবং তারা সেভাবে স্ট্যান্ড দেন তারা সেভাবে নিজেদেরকে যোগ্য করে তুলছে আমাদের দেশে এটা করলে অনেকটাই সম্ভব আমাদের বিষয়টাকে এগিয়ে নিয়ে যাওয়া ধন্যবাদ uh i'd like to now request mr mahbubur rahman research director food planning and monitoring ministry of food to talk about uh how we can actually implement those food security program in the urban areas those food friendly program and vgf vgds and also maybe it will be it will sound big to you but how to incorporate right to food in the constitution so i already uh, appeal to sir he he has to also talk about in the policy forums and also our colleague from cpd you because your name very name uh, uh, directs that you work with the policy so we need your support that we have to establish the right to food as the fundamental rights in the constitution of bangladesh so over to mr mahabub assalamu alaikum thank you very much i am mohammad mahabub rahman gobeshana porichalok fpmu food planning and monitoring khadya mantralay creating nutrition vital city role of multi sectoral platforms yes amra je khane aschi seta holo je government obosshoi ek shomoy bangladesh e je আমাদের ছিল ন্যাশনাল ফুড পলিসি টু থাউজেন্ড সিক্স এবং নিউট্রিশনকে গুরুত্ব দিয়েই বাংলাদেশ বর্তমান সরকার ন্যাশনাল ফুড অ্যান্ড নিউট্রিশন পলিসি করেছে দ্যাট ইজ টু থাউজেন্ড টোয়েন্টি এর এটার একটা প্ল্যান অফ অ্যাকশান করা হয়েছে এবং ওটার ওই যে কান্ট্রি ইনভেস্টমেন্ট প্ল্যানও করা হয়েছে সো দ্যাট আমাদের যে আগের যে অবজেক্টিভগুলি ছিল সেখানে আমরা কিন্তু ওই যে নিউট্রিশনকে অ্যাম্পেসিস দিয়ে আমরা অবজেক্টিভ চলে আসছি পাঁচটা অবজেকটিভসে একটা প্রথমটা হলো টু এনশিওর অ্যাভেলেবিলিটি অফ সেফ অ্যান্ড নিউট্রিশিয়াস ফুড অ্যান্ড হেলদি ফর হেলদি ডায়েট টু এনশিওর অ্যাক্সেস টু সেফ অ্যান্ড নিউট্রিশিয়াস ফুড অ্যাফোর্ডেবল প্রাইস এবং আমরা ওই যে সেফটি নেটের জন্য আমরা সোশ্যাল প্রোটেকশনের জন্য আমরা এটা একটা পলিসি গ্রহণ করেছি এবং ইয়া ওই যে স্ট্যান্ডিং দ্য ইন্টার ইন্টার মিনিস্ট্রিয়াল ইয়া সেটাকেও আমরা একটা পলিসির মধ্যে নিয়েছি এখন আপনাদের যে বিষয়টা এসছে আমরা যে বিষয়টাকে আপনারা এখানে অ্যাড্রেস করেছে যে যেটা ইয়া সিটি কর্পোরেশনকে দ্যাট ইজ রংপুর সিটি ইয়া কর্পোরেশন এবং দিনাজপুর সিটি কর্পোরেশনকে আপনারা ইয়ে করেছেন দ্যাট ইজ সেকেন্ডারি সিটিকে ইয়ে করেছেন আপনারা জানেন যে আরবান ফুড সিস্টেম একটা প্রজেক্ট ইয়াতে চলছে সেখানে আরবানের যে পপুলেশন আমরা জানি যে দুই হাজার পঞ্চাশ সালে একটা অ্যাজামশন করা হয়েছে জনসংখ্যা হবে বাংলাদেশে প্রায় বিশ কোটি এবং দুই হাজার ইয়া ইয়া একচল্লিশ সালের জনসংখ্যা ফিফটি টু পয়েন্ট এইট পারসেন্ট শহরে বসবাস করবে এবং শহরের জনসংখ্যা আটচল্লিশ পার্সেন্ট ইয়া বস্তিতে থাকবে এখন ইয়া এবং এই শহরের দারিদ্র জনগোষ্ঠীর বাউন্ন পার্সেন্ট খাদ্যের জন্য তাদের আয়ে বাউন্ন পার্সেন্টই ব্যয় করতে হচ্ছে যে খাদ্য ব্যয় এখন যে এই যে আপনারা যদি ইয়া দেখি যে ইয়া শহরের বস্তিতে ইয়া শহরের কোন জায়গাটায় আপনার ম্যাল নিউট্রিশন বেশি সেখানে হলো বস্তিতে অপুষ্টি যেমন মাইক্রো নিউট্রিয়েন ডেফিসিয়েন্সি বা ইয়া আর ধনী দরিদ্রের বৈষম্যটা তো দিন দিন বাই মানে শহরের যে ইয়া বাড়ছে সেটা আর আপনারা যে দুটা জেলাকে ইয়া জেলাকে ইয়া করেছেন সেখানে কিন্তু আমাদের যে আইপিসি ইন্টিগ্রেটেড ফেস ক্লাসিফিকেশন যে ক্রনিক ইয়া ইনফিক ইয়া ফুড ইনসিকিউরিটি আছে সেখানে দেখা যাচ্ছে যে বাংলাদেশে সেভেন পারসেন্ট ক্রনিক ফুড ইনসিকিউরিটি ইয়া ভুগছে সেটা হলো যে সুনামগঞ্জ ডিস্ট্রিক্ট এবং কুড়িগ্রাম ডিস্ট্রিক্ট ইয়া যেটা রংপুরের একটা পার্ট এখানে আছে আমরা কিন্তু এই যে খাদ্য বান্ধব কর্মসূচি যেটা আপনারা বলছেন আপনি যেখানে অ্যাড্রেস করেছেন আমরা বিভিন্ন রকম কর্মসূচি সরকার বিভিন্ন ইয়া নিচ্ছেন যেমন ইয়া আমরা ওই যে 
খুব ফ্রেন্ডলি প্রোগ্রাম সেটা জানতে জানতে 30 30 30 টাকা টাকা দিয়ে দিয়ে কেজি প্রতি মাসে প্রতি মাসে কেজি পাস পাস বিল ফি 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 মার মার এন্ড এন্ড বি পি আর আর দিয়ে দিয়ে সেটা করে করে কর কর নবে নবে সেখানে সেখানে আগে আগে 10 টাকা কেজি দিয়ে দিয়ে আমরা 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 ওই আমরা 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 দাঁড়িয়ে দাঁড়িয়ে অনুমোদন করতে হবে এটা সাপ্লাই দিতে হবে তারপর আমরা আমাদের ওপেন মার্কেট আছে যেটা যেটা আমরা মেনশন করেছি এই ওপেন মার্কেট আছে আমরা আমরা সিটি সিটি কর্পোরেশন থেকে বা বা ডিস্ট্রিক্ট লেভেলে আমরা আমরা for food system uh, standards uh, where there is a coordination issue on food uh, food nutrition security and there is also uh, highest human and animal density globally as an example in Dhaka for example uh, which is inequally uh, seen in the world you have a, a number of live animals which make a uh, higher risk for disease spread and anti-microbial resistant AMR. So these are all challenges. But I would like to also bounce back on the, uh, what we explained about the policy and the ministry and the local government. FAO is uh, working on several things, of course, on the policy, has been working on the national food and nutrition security policy and plan of action. Uh, but we also work on the Dakar food system project where we are mapping the city food system and challenges and developing Dakar Food Agenda 2041. And this we are going this we are doing this with a platform which is embarking everybody, not only the ministries, but also the local government. Because the ministries is bringing the top-down approach with a policy, etc. But the local government, they are on the front line. They are the one who can also bring some important initiative. And, uh, and the project under the Dakar Food System project, supported by uh, uh, 
Kingdom of the Netherlands and, uh, and FAO and, uh, and the government under the LGD. Uh, we are also working on, on enlarging this platform with City Working Group. And the City Working Group uh, is really taking very strong initiative for the food system. And the food system involves storage, bringing food in, waste management, all nutrition campaign, everything which is, which is possible at, uh, at the city corporation level. And uh, sometimes it's much more difficult uh, from, uh, when, when we start from the, from the ministry. So just to uh, bounce back on what he said, it's important to have uh, the largest platform as possible to work on, uh, on food system because it is not belonging to one of the ministry. It is not belonging to Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Food, or Ministry of Fishery or Livestock. Everybody is concerned. So I think uh, at, at one stage or another, there is, a, there is room for, for discussion and for, and, and this platform uh, still need to be not created, it exists to some extent. I mean, uh, uh, if you go to the uh, city corporations, there are some platforms for, for, for city working group which are discussing uh, on a weekly basis on all the issues. Uh, so other platforms are, are also for nutrition uh, happening. So it's, it's, if we talk about the food safety, uh, food system, uh, nutrition is only one part of it, and it's an important part because it's involved safety and food safety, etc. So this is very good. I'm very glad to see that today there are many different partners around the table just to give ideas and, uh, and provide some uh, input. Thank you very much. Okay, Javier, but uh, uh, Javier, can I ask you a question? I mean, if in terms of sustainability of a project, I worked with uh, UNDP for more than 10 years, so I found out that the project looks very sleek and the, I mean, the people join the project work as uh, project staff or beneficiary, everybody is vibrant, but after the project is over, everything goes away with the project tenure. Yeah, yeah. So the question of sustainability, if we talk about, I mean, NICE or uh, Dhaka food system, urban food system, okay. so whatever project, what would be the implication of policy? Why not we actually focus on the policies? If policy framework is there, after the project, it will continue because the government will take over because it's written there in their law. Yeah, 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 very right. And I will just uh, the project is uh, is going to finish actually. So it's a very good question. And uh, and the question, well, what is going to happen? What uh, what is the sustainability of the project? The project was designed in a way to demonstrate some pilot activity. We are not going to solve the under this project the food system for the, for the for the 25 million people of Dakar. But we are going to demonstrate a number of activities on. Fresh markets. Fresh market, an example, the project has initiated farmers market. Every week there are some new farmers market opening. I mean, they, this is sustainable because this, this, are, this, is, this has started, this is taken at the initiative of the, of the city corporation, and this will continue. It depends on the people on the ground, if they want to continue or not. Improvement of fresh markets, this is something the project has been also doing some work with, uh, with the government, with the city corporation, in changing uh, the rule and safety of the fresh markets. So this is something which has been demonstrated in a couple of markets in Mohali and uh, I forgot the yeah, name. About 100 yeah. market we are collaborating. So is, this, is this documented somewhere and owned by the government? Yes, yes, yes. yes. And, the, and the crown of the, I mean, the, the jewel on the crown, I will say, is with all this initiative on the awareness campaign, etc., is has been to develop uh, what we are going to call the DACA Food Agenda 2041, which is going to be released in, 2004, in, in December this year, sent to the government, and those government, how long it will take, maybe one month, two months, three months, but it's going to be a kind of 
roadmap, a solid roadmap for what the government could do and embark on and support in order to reach 2041 with, uh, with a strong uh, food system. And uh, we just came back from, uh, from uh, a study tour on, uh, in one city in Melbourne, which has been the first one to sign the uh, Milan Pact uh, back um, 15 years ago. And they have a very strong food system policy. And we learn a lot from this. Uh, for your information, each of the city corporation has now in place, in Dakar, a, a, a food charter. They have been able to uh, endorse. There, there is a food charter. In, if you ask to each of your city corporations, there is a food charter. So this food charter exists, and this food charter is, is coming uh, to support also the food agenda. So the two are converging, the policy level and, and the ground level. I mean, of course, there will be a, a lot of work to be done by development partners, by NGOs, by beneficiaries to continue and to improve and to develop some more activity on the food system. At the same time, uh, uh, we have been working on this uh, uh, policy level, which is going to be uh, hopefully supporting. I Thank think uh, that we need a bilateral meeting between NICE project and your project so that we can exchange more and learn more from you, how you work, and then you, we, both of us get benefited. Thank you, Javier, for your <coughs> wonderful feedback. I'd like to request uh, Dr. Khaleda Islam, Director Institute of uh, Nutrition and Food Science, Dhaka University, and colleagues from... Uh, Colleagues from abroad, uh, Dhaka University is, is the most prestigious university in, in Bangladesh. So, Dr. Khaled Islam. Thank you. Shabai ke shagot janachi. I mean, Bangladesh bolchi and sometimes Xavier, uh, Xavier Bowen. We have been working together. Uh, for this Dhaka Food Project uh, uh, 2041, and we have been working for quite a long time, and uh, we are going to complete this project within this year. And uh, as you have mentioned, that this program is very much uh, related with your program, because we have been focusing on multi-sectoral stakeholder uh, pro uh, pro uh, platform, and we are uh, almost 20 ministries are involved, and academia, and uh, two city corporation uh, and uh, civil society, <clears throat> other beneficiary, fish market owner, all the stakeholders are involved in this project. And a lot of meetings have been, uh, uh, this one, okay. And a lot of meetings we have uh, conducted so far and a lot of meetings are going to uh, happen uh, ahead. Uh, and in this uh, project, what we have uh, uh, focused that, uh, uh, due to the rapid urbanization, um, we are uh, expecting or we are very much scared to that uh, yeah, by to 2040, our ar urban population we reach, uh, will increase uh, almost uh, around 52% will be the urban population. And then the challenges uh, will be uh, many more multifocal uh, uh, challenges. Uh, and the number one is the undernutrition which include uh, a triple burden on the nutrition, like uh, 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 under nutrition, overnutrition, and, uh, micronutri and micronutrient deficiency, number one. Number two is how to feed this uh, large uh, population. And what will be the scenario in 2041 is that the, all the people will uh, uh, be like this, like uh, 2022, or their food habit will be shifted, uh, from home uh, making uh, food uh, preparation to restaurant or outside, they will dine outside, something like this. And uh, with the expansion of the city population, a lot of area will be inhabited by the people. So there are some, there are many peri-urban area who are growing a lot of vegetable and fruit. So that area will be occupied by the population. So what will be the situation of this uh, produce? 
So is that to that uh, the, our roof gardening will play a role to feed uh, this increased number of urban population? And uh, another question is, uh, what will be the sanitation problem, hygiene issue, and uh, uh, of course the social psychological issue? So a lot of, lot of challenges maybe we will have to face or not. So we are hopeful that we, we, we will face a good uh, future in 2041. Uh, for that reason, our project is focusing on how to solve this problem and how, uh, what will be our preparedness. So almost 20 ministry is engaged in this uh, project and our goal is not to uh, solve the problem but to make a plan to cope with this problem, what will be coming, what will be there. So this is our uh, program. And if I miss something, Zovia, can you add? Apa, uh, we, in the interest of time, we cannot actually move to Okay, uh, okay, okay. Again. That's the, the Zavia, because we are uh, working the same project, and our, we are working, uh, actually, I, I have other uh, project too, but this, as your project is very much related to it's our uh, 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 food uh, 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 twi uh, twi 2041 project, that's why I am focusing on that project too. So we hope that if you are interested, we can join us yeah. and we can share our experience with you if you need. And that's all from my side. And okay. I thank you so much. Thank you. Appa. So, uh, okay. I think we deprived other speakers from clapping. So now on let's clap. I mean, as we are the fair end of the... Yeah, okay, <laughs> excellent. Uh, let us uh, hear from... Thank you, Apat. Let us hear from uh, Dr. Nassim, Managing Director, Winal High Tech BD. Your time is one minute. <laughs> well, I... Uh, we are one hour late. We no, started but one that hour should late. not that should not start from me. You have a, you have allowed people to speak for five minutes and me one minute. This is disparity, discrimination. Okay, okay, bye. Two anyway, minutes. no, no, no. It's, I'm just kidding, kidding. I know, I know. We are running <laughs> late. Everybody must be hungry by now. Well, I I I used to work at Bangladesh Rice Institute. Many of you probably have known. I told them, I told you earlier. Initially, our priority was grow more food. For the last 40 years, we thought giving our people more food so they don't stay hungry. But with the increment increase of our economy, now, uh, now the, the, the paradigm is shifting. We are thinking more of nutrition, good food, affordable food, healthy food. Now it's changing, not only in rice, in different sectors. It's, it's good. But again, with this uh, corona and Ukraine-Russia war, people are becoming poorer. Probably we are, our priority again, as our prime owner of Prime Minister was telling us, grow food for each, every inch of, of our cultivable land. Meaning, we have to feed our people. Then probably nutrition will come at the secondary level. Yes, maybe, I do not know, because it's changing situations, changing scenario, that is beyond our control. About somebody said more than 35 pe percent of our people becoming poorer as a result of Corona and this uh, Ukraine Russia war. Many other factors are coming. Uh, also, as I w I worked at Rice, I can tell you uh, we are self-sufficient in rice production. But somebody said, uh, why you are self-sufficient rice and why you are importing? We are importing 1.5 million to 2 million tons every year. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes goes down because of ensuring food security. There are some, some incidences, uh, floods, droughts, many other things. And you have to remember, every year there are 2.2 million people are increasing. It is rapidly increasing. It is ca call it, uh, what do you call it, cyclic in increment. This year 22, mil uh, 22 lakhs, and maybe next year 23 lakhs or four. So we have to think about those hungry mouths. We have to feed them. And, and the, as our economy progressed la during last uh, 10, 15 years, the rice consumption, consumption decreased about 100 grams per day. Uh, particularly the urban people starting eating less rice.
but, our, but, but the rural people, there is still studying rice. And as a rice researcher or rice producer, we always think, because 75%, roughly, I would say, of our food is, uh, of, uh, food is rice, constitutes of rice. That, that const rice constitutes 75% of our food, mainly. Whenever you go, we, we say, aapne ke bhaat khai sen, ke boli na jab aap me dupure khao khilen ki na. They're synonymous. But how we are, in, 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 what do you call it? Uh, including other nutrients like vitamin A, zinc, different vitamins, uh, particularly vitamin A and zinc. And there are at least seven varieties we have developed uh, uh, from our rice that is enriched in rice, in, in zinc. That is conventional breeding. It's not that genetically modified crop. But we are thinking, we have gone lot lot far, maybe within next few years, we'll be having vitamin A, golden rice, because lots of people are suffering from vitamin A deficiency. They are going blind, they are stunted, some meritless, some, sometimes. So maybe we hope, because it is being stacked at the Ministry of Environment, as, as we heard. But hopefully, vitamin A in enrich, uh, vitamin uh, A rice, we call it golden rice, that is already released in Philippines a few years ago. But maybe we are hoping. We have developed the, the variety already. We incorporate the, the gene from, from uh, maize itself. So it is, a, it is a sort of genetically modified crop. There are some huge cries, some, some other uh, uh, some objections from different quarters. Definitely there will be. But we have, we have said it is very safe, very safe for our, for our consumption, for our environment. Uh, already we have BTB in gel. It's also genetically modified brinjal. We have it is already in practice for the last few years. So it's okay, but that uh, we have been trying, because rice is the stable food and we have to incorporate more minerals, more vitamins, more essentials into the rice so that people can get the essential things. Uh, there are many, uh, as I'm a rice man, I should more concentrate on rice. There are many rice, there is a, there is a how do you call it, uh, kind of, uh, uh, kind of idea that rice contains more sugar. It's not true. One gram, 100 gram of rice just gives out 100 milligram of sugar. Whereas carrot can give you uh, 800 grams of uh, milligram of, of sugar. Maybe potato more, about 400 grams. So there is a misconception, but we have to think about it. There are many rice who are very good for, for diabetic patients. And they have antioxidant. We mainly very rich, particularly the local varieties that we are we are we are losing in course of time, but that are being incorporated in our modern varieties. But my concern, I definitely is concern, we need to have not only rice alone, that will not save, make ourselves sufficient in nutrition. We have to take fruits, as somebody has said, one third should one fourth should be rice, one fourth would be fruits one for the fruits and one for some, some other protein sources. But probably we are not at that level yet. Dad, let me, I mean, assist you. There's a color plate published by Yes, UNICEF, yes, yes. So we can use the, grab that color. Yes, yes. I've been, I've been attending some food uh, meeting with the particular lady uh, before me. So you, we have been listening to this. Yes, rice is becoming now little bit not can, the... Can you, can, can we talk a little bit about, I mean, focus on uh, for, with your engagement with the government and the private sector. How well, can uh, we make uh, this multi-sectoral platform? Uh, uh, yes, you're right, you're right. Because as, 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 a, as, as a little bit elderly person, I, I can see the both sides of the coin. I work at the government, now working in the private sector. Many of government people after retiring, they, they come to the private sector. Government sector is really their regulatory facilitating bodies. And if, as a private sector, we, we, we push things. Let's do it within, within certain period of time, this within, within certain uh, agenda. Uh, now our, uh, our government is telling we have to make the food sufficient, sell sufficient, again, food, not only rice, in, in terms of other vegetable fruits, other, because you know, last few weeks, I, uh, even the, our honorable minister, who, who was uh, my colleague in, at, at the agriculture system, now they are emphasizing more on oil, 
মোর অন হট ইউ মশলাটা কি বলে বাংলা ইংলিশে স্পাইসেস অ্যান্ড ম্যানি আদার থিংস দ্যার বিকজ বড়ো ইজ টেকিং কেয়ার অফ মোস্ট মোস্ট ল্যান্ড ইজ বিং কভার্ড বাই বড়ো ইন ডিউরিং ডিউরিং রবি সিজন অ্যান্ড রবি সিজন অলসো ইজ দ্য সিজন ফর আদার ক্রপস লাইক হুইট স্পাইসেস lentils and well well crops we'll, so we'll we'll come back to you bhai okay okay no now i let me conclude let me conclude by saying it's a very important and um, uh, meeting i should say many many sector people are coming we can learn from each other and definitely there's a time to think about how nutritive foods we can provide to our our people thank you thank you um, uh, i'd like to request uh, Mr. Abdul Wadud, the Executive Director, he is also Additional Secretary to the Government. Uh, uh, Executive Director Barton. Barton is uh, 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 new to Minister of Research and yeah. Training on Applied Engineering. Yeah. So, Minister of Agriculture too, actually, he has kindly, I mean, consented to come here and he has stayed the whole day. So, I would like to, um, uh, Minister of Agriculture is, I mean, very engaged with the Arun food system and they have the metropolitan agricultural uh, officer offices uh, present in all the cities so uh, we find uh, nothing short uh, of minister of agriculture hmm. so the the food production i mean the 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 growth of uh, agriculture in bangladesh is a con big uh, agriculture minister has a big contribution in that so uh with this praise uh, i'd like to uh, invite you sir to uh, put your comments opinions or suggestions anything on this multi sectoral uh, platforms and for creating a vibrant uh, urban food system <coughs> thank you mr moderator and thanks for your nice presentation and also uh, miss helen from nice projects tph kp is okay thank you so is tph oh actually uh, from your presentation we have heard many thing the situation of nutrition in bangladesh and worldwide now you want to, want to know about the role of multi sectoral platform actually today's round table discussion main key point you want to make nutrition a vital city and a special focus on two cities on the northern radius that is you are going to piloting these two areas we are working we have been working you are, you are working also there yeah we have been working for the last two years okay one year okay but uh, from since you are working last two years but you, from your presentation i could not see any uh, mid term evaluation or anything no it's outcome. one year one year yeah. plus actually the two cities the northern cities they have been this have been development developed poroshoba in 1969 very old cities yeah and kumila uh, rangpur city corporation have been instead or um, turned into city corporation in 2012 these two cities why the city corporation lies in the district the dinaspur district and rangpur district both are sufficient in food production yes. both are sufficient around 4 lakhs ton both districts but since a township has been developed where all the arable <coughs> land has been turned into non arable land you know in the city areas there is no arable land according to law there should not be they should when you go to uh, pay your tax they will collect according to the in, in this way so and again since the two districts are sufficient in food and again in case of uh, livestock and uh, 
poultry and fisheries. Rongpur stood a very much, uh, they are a, th their position is elevated than other divisions. Wrong but the data is very bleak. The poverty all over the all, no, 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 all no, over Bangladesh please. poverty has decreased. But in Rongpur, only in Rongpur division, poverty is okay. 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 Increased. Now you know the Bangladesh has received full sufficiency in case of cereal, in case of meat, in case of uh, I see egg, in case of meat, excepting milk. Accepting milk, we are sufficient in all the cases, but we are lagging behind. 35% of people are suffering food insecurity. The FAO published recent data that around 73% of our people, they cannot afford healthy diet. Right. But we are sufficient food in all cases. Government expect, expect that we are going to su sufficient in milk also. But why we are lagging behind in case of nutrition? Why 28% under five children are stunted? Why 10% children under five are wasted? And why 23% of children under five are low weight? Why everyone among the three pregnant women are low weight. Why? Why 20% of people are lying below the poverty line? Why? There is a cause. There are some causes. Because we are, we are sufficient in all cases. But there are problem that is, that is affordability problem. Our per capita income has been increased a lot. Per capita income has been increased. How shall we, how shall we actually uh, include them? As I asked uh, Minister of food, food colleague, how can we include them in the government sa okay. safety net? How okay, can okay. we actually include that in the constitution? So these are actually, actually uh, analysis. We can do this analysis. It's never ending. Yeah. But we have to address the issue. How can we solve the problem? Yes, yes. Government is trying, government trying is best level. In safety net program, you know, the pregnant women are under the safety net program. Lactating women are under the safety net program, you know. Fishermen are under the safety net program, you know. The old age people are under the safety net program. The, uh, yeah, there are many, many so sections. All of the, all the people are covered under no, the safety no, net program. No, no. I think people are covered, people are covered, but the amount, since Bangladesh economic condition, they are the price, the, the safety net, the money is given is, is small, which is, which is not sufficient. Government is trying, government is trying to increase every year, every year, okay. Now my comment is, please first go for a baseline survey in the city areas. We did it. Then find out the stakeholders down the loopholes. We did it. Yeah. Then ask, set the stakeholders who, is, who's, who are the responsible for whose program. Since the city areas, agriculture production is very less. No, we, we, we did that and we found out the gap and then we requested Ministry of Food yeah. to actually include food friendly program in the city area. Actually, brother, actually we have to make, make food affordable. We have to make food affordable. Affordable not the availability. Availability not affordability. There is food everywhere. If you open your door, you see the vendors waiting in your doorstep. You cannot buy it. Yeah, you cannot buy. Yeah, then go for affordability and find out the ways how the affordability can be increased. This alone you cannot do. This alone one ministry cannot do. The all ministries should sit together. They should come up and the ways should be rationalized. Okay.
and I think that's that's why we arranged this yes. discussion. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So thank I you. would we hope that uh, you are additional secretary and you can contribute in a great way in terms of policy influence and suggesting us and collaborator. We also will seek your uh, button to be on board of to work with our project so yes. that we can collaborate and make uh, the best out of uh, our uh, individual strengths. But then actually provide training to the marginal people yeah. and the officers and the all people. Let's see how can to we, raise the how level we of can nutrition. collaborate. Yeah. But then also conduct research in this. Uh, so uh, nutrition. thank, thank you, you for your uh, wonderful you. Uh, discussion. And thank you. Thank you. Uh, let me. Let me just. I mean, I I don't know. I mean, why people are so miser. Yeah. <laughs> Let's give a big hand to all our participants, all our panelists. Huh? So, uh, let me invite uh, Mr. No, you wrote a lot of names, so I actually. Yeah. Mr. Shoiduddin Akbar, Chief Executive Director, Bangladesh Institute of ICT in Development. Thank you. In fact, this is not the time to talk even. <laughs> I don't think that everybody can concentrate, but let's uh, focus on this today's discussion. And uh, I want to start with the uh, keynote presentation. Uh, to me, it was too wide. Uh, you tried to resolve all the problems. <laughs> so I think uh, it, would, it could be good uh, if we could uh, narrow it down and more focused uh, because we had a very specific agenda today. So to start with, uh, I, my observation is, uh, since we are talking about a role of multi-sectoral platforms, but unfortunately I don't see two major components, uh, stakeholders not in this room. One is the private sector, and second is the youth and adolescents. I am a big fan of adolescent groups because we have been pursuing the nutrition club and nutrition Olympiad because they are the 57% of the population. So if, if you ignore them, if you don't uh, uh, engage them, then uh, you are really missing the whole uh, ecosystem. Second thing is uh, that is the demographic dividend for Bangladesh. Uh, because with the older people, we have done enough. <laughs> that is my observation in these days. Uh, because we have good policies. Honestly speaking, Bangladesh have food, and, uh, food security and nutrition policy. We have a national strategy for adolescents. We have all these policies. But what is in the reality? The reality is the execution. We have uh, the we have the DG of uh, Bangladesh uh, National Nutrition uh, uh, Council. Uh, we have the DNCC and uh, UNCC. But how many of these DNCC are functioning? Whether the youths are getting engaged, uh, local stakeholders is getting engaged into this whole governance process. So if that is not there, then all these discussions again be coming to these discussions and we'll talk a lot, but uh, we cannot really produce anything good for the community. Uh, thanks to NICE uh, project, they have, uh, because we worked together and we took the liberty to do a little bit of out of the box. Sometimes we are in the box and we talk about out of the box. So we have to get out of the box first, uh, so that we can see that how really we can make the change. Uh, because uh, my belief is that uh, the, f uh, the data, in fact, uh, uh, just the additional secretary was mentioning about the uh, accessibility and affordability, 73.5% population don't have access to healthy diet. This is the data of July 22. So whatever we speak from uh, in many organizations that we have done this and that, but the reality is this. So now what we are pursuing, definitely everybody has their own role, uh, but as in uh, youth advocacy, uh, we, we think that uh, if uh, really we can concentrate on these big population through the ac academic institutions, uh, we have huge network of schools and colleges, and if we can sensitize them uh, to change their behavior, because we need to change the whole ecosystem through the behavior change, and also adopt them the healthy lifestyle. It's uh, all about, we have seen this thing, and everybody we know, that uh, even having the uh, lunch in their uh, school bag, they go to the street and take the fuchka and chatputi. 
and which is very unhygienic. We, we, we couldn't stop it, and we don't want to stop it. Rather, we want to make it healthy and safe. That's why we are in discussion with the Food Safety Authority now to reaching out all the upazelas, at least one school, one upazela, one champion should be there so that we can do something good. So I don't want to get into that details, but uh, my humble request for everybody to work uh, collaboratively, not only papers, not only the presentations. Let's make it happen. Uh, because just recently we conducted the International Nutrition Olympiad and we have seen the enthusiasm of the youth people. So if we can ride on them and we can really build uh, them uh, with skills, essential skills, with enough knowledge and uh, promote entrepreneurship. The biggest challenge I feel, the whole system depends on the entrepreneurs. But how who are coming into the entrepreneurs uh, domain? Uh, they are not our top scorers. They are not the best people because the whole ecosystem discourages them to become an entrepreneur. I know Farad Bhai and the team is, has been supporting a lot of entrepreneurship, but at the same time it's a long and uh, a very critical challenge because of the ecosystem itself. If you ask everybody that what, uh, uh, particularly if I ask INFS student, what they want to be, they want to be the BCS officer. All public universities, agriculture university is the top. 50, out of 57 secretaries, 30 are from agriculture university. So those are the trends we are facing. So the complex is not food or anything. It's an ecosystem problem I do see. So uh, we will again pursue uh, that uh, let's uh, engage the youth and adolescent for a long-term solution and sustainable solution. Thank you very much. Thank you, bhai. It was wonderful to know that my discussion was very elaborate and I tried to solve what the world's, all the world's, world's problem. I'll narrow down it for sure. Okay. Uh, this, was, uh, this was very interesting that you, you mentioned about this uh, uh, population dividend. The, 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 you talk about the Youths, youths, yeah. Uh, they are our actually future leaders. So we actually uh, missed out the opportunity to include them. In future, we'll actually bring them. As, uh, maybe the Department of Youth uh, Development and also the networks, youth networks, there are multiple. Uh, in my organization, I work with a lot of young people. So I understand the uh, the the potential, the, the room for innovation. So with this, uh, we'd like to invite Dr. Hassan Shahriar Kobir, DZ, Bangladesh uh, National Nutrition Council. What you, for your, I mean, you missed out some of our presentation, but nevertheless, uh, uh, you probably saw that uh, uh, 2022 food uh, safety, indexes yeah. so in terms of paper we we are good at it good and place. very good thank you very much actually a very timely one with the uh, sitting and uh, exchange of views thanks for the organizers Syngenta and i think swedish uh, what is the i mean thank you very much i'm just pointing and uh, also inviting me that is a pleasure talking to you guys and uh, really i'm sorry that i was uh, late, I had another program in uh, Bangabandhu Center that was also on nutrition and uh, I had to come a long way. Anyway, Assalamu Alaikum and uh, this is afternoon and we are all not in a mood to really hear many th things and there is not much things to say because I have heard almost all the uh, relevant points. Here, actually we are talking about, if you are coming back, just I will take uh, maybe two and a half minutes creating nutrition vital city. There are components, you see, if you look at the, the subject, creating, forget it, nutrition vital city. So we're talking about something in the city scenario and the subject is nutrition. Okay, gone. Then come to role of multi-sectoral platforms. What does it mean really? It has been nowadays use, used a lot and as I am working in the EPEX body, policy making body of nutrition, which works with 23 ministries, basically to tell about six, and a broader 11. 
and more broader, broader 23. Something like that. You know this. I mean, if you're talking about nutrition, you have to have agriculture, you have to have uh, uh, food, you have to have uh, so many other six ministries together, walk parallelly, not like one going for another and behind. This is actually a multi-sectoral approach. Anyway, we, uh, we work in horizontal way and vertical way. Vertically, we are communicating with these people, with their focal persons and the relevant secretaries. And you, you know it, uh, but not to repeat, but I have to repeat that we have national committee, we have national technical committee, these, 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 these. So many things. By papers. Uh, I really like this word. And also not in papers. We have the district committee. I'm, talk I'm really uh, engaging uh, Shoydul Lavai. And uh, the uh, UNC, DNCC and UNCC. This is the, actually, I think the the main core program for nutrition as a multi-sectoral base. That's it. But, but, there is a but. But is what? But is you have to cover the 64 uh, districts. You have to cover 494 upazilas. And not only that, through that upazila committee, you have to reach the door to door. I mean, what is the union level? How can you, from a far, far away in Petulia or Tekna or in Bandarban, how can you reach through Puzzle Committee meeting and you say something about nutrition? Where, as you, somebody has said, where the sun comes from the work and say, Bhaddema means give me rice, not give me food. You have said. I was about to tell this, and you have said already. So, I mean, still we have give me rice, give me rice, give me cereal. And says 66 percent, the lowest and the highest, I would say 70 percent, is still on cereals. This is, I mean, done. But we have to reach this message to door to door also. And these, uh, uh, what do you call this vertical way of uh, giving this nutrition message and communication should be very important. Now this is the whole scenario. Come about urban population. We are talking about urban. For me, the urban areas even not in the, in the districts, though officially, if you say it should be the 64 districts, or almost all of them have to see, I mean, everyone has the municipal corporation, not corporation, municipality, and some of them have municipal corporation, and the local government. Here the engagement should be, more focus should be. I'm taking two big cities, though you have taken Rangpur and Dinaspur, I'm taking Dhaka and Chirugong. I'm just telling, in a discussion sake, you have urban slums. Do you really know? Again, I'm, what about these boys and these girls who are aging from six years to 19 years, taking your thing from the bazaar, from Kauran Bazaar and going, what nutrition message we are doing? He is not in any school. No, sorry, he is not in any school. 80% of them not in any any formal school. Some of them, government, I thank to the Honorable Prime Minister, some of them in informal school. Some of them, I know, because I work in slum area. They are in informal school and again coming back to work. And others, they are young child labor workers. You have to, these are not in the village. Village, no, it is less, but these people, if you are telling 66% these coming into this also, the urban slums, suburban area, come to Kamalapur Bosti, come to these big, big areas. These areas should be, there should be the nutritional plan. So now what this BNNC is doing? See, for urban nutrition strategy, I have already said that by papers we have everything ready. Everything. I think many of them who come across with this are small but uh, Theoretically, it's a very big organization because led by the, our uh, Her Excellency, the Honorable Prime Minister, you know, and uh, it is the mandate from the Bangu uh, Jati Chorak Bangu Mundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman back in July 1975. So, BNNC has got specific urban nutrition strategy as a multi-sectoral platform for ensuring urban and city nutrition system. A lot of research work, a lot of things are there. It is there. Only thing is to enroll these people in the safety net of nutrition. 
And this is also the work is going on through our, our uh, I mean, not as a whole, but in different areas, different areas, it's going on. Only what we have to do, we have to expedite. We don't have much time, come on. We don't have much time, but we are, yeah. uh, yes, we are talking, talking, hey, yes, we have to talk. We have to have plenary sessions. We have to have so many things. But at the same time, our field workforce, our field attitudes, aptitudes should be increased. This is my, actually, as uh, I'm not a very big expert on this subject. But what I see from my level, from the uh, service delivery level and the service receiving level, this gap should be minimized, minimized. As nutrition, the other name is the lifestyle. Actually, nutrition is not food. Nutrition is complete package of life. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, before I go to the other um, speak, other panelists, let me uh, I mean, ask you a question. I mean, we have a lot of Shuid. I am very inspired uh, listening to Shuid by and um, to you. So. Uh, recently, I mean, something happened with uh, the whole country. I mean, it, there was an interesting program, a school meals program, you know that, right? So the, the program was uh, stopped. So this school meal program was stopped. No, 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 it was the, 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 the no. The school meal program was stopped by the ACNEC. I am talking about the ACNEC thing. So, as Prime Minister, did, did chair the ACNEC committee. Uh, did government uh, allocate any budget for school Yes. Yes. Yeah. Government took up the project and government actually planned to cook food for the children in the, in the school yard. So, there was a discussion in the ACNEC meeting and the project was dropped. This is a massive. So, if you have any clue, please, I mean, do something for the project so that we can influence this. Okay. So, a lot of children will be drop out in Bangladesh because of the absence of this program. As Prime Minister is the chair of uh, your committee, so you can, you can also influence. I mean, somehow ventilate to the Prime Minister that this is a good program, it should be continued. A lot of children in the vulnerable communities, uh, we interviewed them and they said that uh, our children actually go to school for the meal. So, uh, with this, uh, this is a request from my part because I went through all the papers and documents and the news. So, uh, this is my, I mean, I, th I feel urged to, to talk about this. All right. So, let me um, now go to Professor MD Joshi Moddin. Uh, uh, professor of Horticulture, Department, uh, Sher Bangla Agriculture University. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> now, I will go after later. <laughs> oh. We are hungry also. No, just I want to say. You have, you have, I mean, uh, two minutes time. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> uh, I want to say something, just one or two points only. Because uh, many families always discuss many points. Yes. I want to, uh, in urban area, this is our uh, Department of Agriculture Extension and other local uh, uh, NGOs, NGOs and other uh, Department of Food. If we do we will do together in the uh, awareness about the rooftop gardening and the some allowing is really uh, cancer from a hydroponic system. We can really uh, cancer leafy vegetables and more new PCRs for the people. Then if we uh, awareness and there was uh, some people also in a new project or other, if you give some uh, support to them to produce the uh, hydroponic system, small smoke system, they will produce their own uh, family uh, leafy vegetables. They will, uh, they will uh, culture and they will eat. And uh, they will uh, recover their nutritional problems easily. And rooftop garden also, we can introduce the rooftop garden in urban area. Then if, you, uh, if uh, we could 
Yeah, metropolitan. I mean, the, uh, thank you for your wonderful suggestions. We can also uh, go for bioflock technology. Yes, yes. Small uh, unit with the, with, uh, yeah, with, with the aquaponics and other things. But why you students are going for BCS administration and other cases? No, it's I mean, another issue because they are yeah. in our country, uh, who has this stick or a gun, he is the powerful. All right. All right. Thank you. I, I just uh, wanted to add some humor at the end of the because everybody is hungry and tired. Yes. So uh, uh, the, thank you, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. We had a wonderful discussion, panel discussion. Do you have any questions? Is there anyone who dares to ask a question or I, I mean, allow you to, <laughs> I allow you to ask the question. Yeah, yeah please. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I think so. In your presentation, you just in the last slide you mentioned the collaboration with Ministry of Food and Ministry of Local Government. Just you completed this. Yeah. But if that should because because if we want to improve urban system, urban food system, I mean uh, the ar include the Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of yeah, Agriculture. I know, but pri preliminary for local government ordinance uh, reform, uh, the City Corporation Act. 2009, 2009 to upgrade that to reform that you need the leadership of local government division right and ministry of food should actually work with that yeah so, and then also if you want to establish right to food in the constitution so ministry of food should take lead all right so any other questions to me to uh, any other bhai after a question go to jason uh, thank you thank you yeah. Seconds, maybe. Last time he gave me only one. Five minute. seconds. Five seconds. Times right to food is not included in our in our constitution. Probably we have to di talk or discuss with our men member of parliament. Is that the best, uh, best right people? Yeah, they will be our stakeholder. They should be our stakeholder. We really, uh, how, whatever we cry, it, it will not make, make a good sense unless you can uh, convince. Yeah, that's what we've been thinking. Okay, then another good thing. Because you told there will be another meeting. It's meeting or so, like that. Uh, can you invite uh, some other stakeholders like? Uh, farmer leaders who grow food for us so that they can know which is good food, which are not, which is safe, which are not. Maybe some dealer, retailer or shopkeepers so they can know how to keep the seed, uh, keep the food, how to sell the seed, how to process the foods to make it safe over the time. So maybe it, it, there are millions of people, you cannot always, you cannot invite them, but maybe some of them. No, excellent, invite. excellent. I Thank mean, you very these much. These are important stakeholders. Yeah. We you. have farmers hub, so we can invite them and we also have access to shops and, I mean, dealers. Thank so you. We Thank, can you. Invite Thank you, brother. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. So uh, with this, uh, mm -hmm. we, we have uh, participants from academia, from, we have experts, we have professionals, we have uh, local, uh, 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 I mean, <coughs> participants from Bangladesh, Switzerland, and uh, Javier, you're from which country? France. 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 I went to Britain, yeah. okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, uh, we, t we covered almost Asia and Europe, okay. So, at the fag end of this uh, vibrant discussion, I'd like to congratulate my colleagues and we look forward to work again. Now, I would like to request Mr. 
Farad Jamil, to, to conclude, I mean, you say uh, one or two sentences, at least. <laughs> I mean, it looks good when we actually, so uh, before that, I'd like to take, uh, uh, take a break from the global audience. Thank you for staying with us. It, it has been a pleasure to, to talk to you. Go on, me. So I like the uh, term that actually uh, nutrition is a lifestyle. So actually, uh, we want to see that uh, the city dwellers, they uh, will aware about the nutritious food and they will eat nutritious food. And for that actually, we have to work on both demand and supply side. So uh, actually, the ideally the uh, urban people, they will not actually, they, uh, if they want to produce food for themselves, actually it is really a great struggle. But if we can develop the supply system when actually farmers are produce uh, food responsibly and uh, within the supply system and the actually where food is available through the value chain that will be, they will follow all the uh, uh, i mean the uh, protocols or the uh, uh, sops so that actually uh, that give the standard of supplying the food so if we are make available uh, safe food at the city level through working at the supply side at the same time we have to work on the yeah, uh, demand side to build the awareness of city dwellers to make uh, to know uh, how the safe food is how the nutritious food is how to intake this and for that part actually i think uh, several organizations involved so we have to work with both the food systems as well as the uh, health systems so safer uh, for safe food, uh, Ministry of Agriculture, and we are talking about that. But when a consumer, when he uh, want to consume his uh, uh, nutritious food, they mostly rely on the, uh, their physicians. So doctor can play a very important role. Or the shopkeeper, they can play a very important role. Or the other stakeholder can play a very important role. Again, uh, the city corporation authority has a very great role to ensure the execution. So Bangladesh Food Safety Authority, they will develop the policy, but for the execution level, they have to collaborate with the city corporation. So for the particular ground, I think that actually, we have started this pilot project in uh, Rangpur and Dinatpur to secondary cities, our initial target. And this is a 12 years long project, divided into three phases. Based on the success of the first phase, we will go to the second phase. But at the same time, we are always open to learn from other similar kind of projects already implemented so uh, we are very much actually would like to sit with the uh, FAO so that we can bring some of the learnings from there and uh, we are implementing the project but uh, uh, if we want to achieve the uh, overall goal of this project without engagement of uh, stakeholders both government private sector and other things it is not possible so Syngenta Foundation and uh, we actually the facilitating organization so actually, we build the system, whole ecosystem, through partnership with the stakeholders and the actually uh, and the recipient, actually uh, whom actually we do work, the city corporation dwellers. So thank you for joining this call. All of your important points we will actually note down. Actually, this really help us to work. On hey, it will be published in the daily basis standard as a supplement. Supplement. Yeah. Will I? I will make sure that your photos look good. <laughs> and. <laughs> So, so with this, uh, we, you can come here and then let's take a picture holding hands so that we don't, we don't fall apart after the meeting. So uh, once again, the dear global audience, is, is it closed or oh, they are still there <laughs> on Facebook, Twitter and are you guys there? Okay, so bye bye. Have a wonderful day ahead. Thank you very much. Let's come for the photo.